of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have the roll call, please. Councilor Baybine. Present. Councilor Rowan. Here. Councilor Katarina. Present. Councilor St. Clair. Here. Councilor Hayes. Here. Councilor Chiazzo. Here. Chairman Donovan. Present. Uh, general public comments. Anyone uh, who would like to be able to address the town council on any issue uh, other than those that are on the agenda today uh, may approach, identify yourself and your address, and three minutes. Good evening, my name's Dave Green. I live at 135 Beach Ridge Road. And I'm here tonight as Dave Green, the taxpayer, not to be confused with any of the committees I'm on in town. <laughs> what I'm about to say is my opinion. I'm gonna tell you a little story. I have a business called DC Green Enterprises, Inc. And I'm also a commercial clamor. And I put my boat in down to the ramp on a daily basis. Now, I would like to ask you people if it would be possible if I could get some town employees to help me launch my boat down there. And you're all sitting here now, there. what did I smoke before I came down here? But this is what went on last summer. Town employees loading paddle boards, canoes, kayaks for a private enterprise that apparently has some form of a relationship with this town. And I've been asking questions, and I haven't been getting a whole lot of answers. But I don't need a law degree to know how high the town's dairy air was up the pole flapping in the breeze. The lawsuits. It's just phenomenal that someone could even fathom having town employees work for an exclusive private company. So what I'm asking for is the same uh, little bit of help that this company got to launch my boat, sometimes twice a day. So a little food for thought. There's something here really fishy, and it stinks. Because I don't understand how the town can grant one private enterprise company exclusive rights to do business in this town down at Pine Point. Now I've been asking, 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 and nobody's been a whole lot forthcoming with any answers about what is going on. Other than, oh, we're not gonna do that this year. How did you ever get to the point that you're gonna do it once? That is, if not illegal, immoral. This is a town. This isn't somebody's private little enterprise. And those were public employees working for a private company down there. And I, as a taxpayer, don't appreciate being stuck out in that position. Now, I'll leave you people to go find out what you want. If you've got any questions, by all means, call me. I'm in the phone book. Dave Green. Thank you. Thank you, David. Good evening. My name is Craig Frederick. I am the chair of the Historic Preservation Implementation Committee. Tonight we had a brief ceremony down in Memorial Park to dedicate the relocated Danish Village Arch. Now, all seven of you and the town manager know this because you were all there. And I simply wanted to thank you all for your much appreciated support and assistance. Thank you, Greg. Anyone else who would like to address the town council? Hi, good evening. My name is Mo Erickson. I live at 288 Pine Point Road. And I've come before the committee asking um, for, I guess, for everyone to stay out of Pine Point as far as trying to beautify it and put sidewalks in and try to make it something uh, more quaint. Um, I've mentioned to you that I like it just the way it is. But with that said, um, I've noticed lately that the buildings next to the clam bake where the nestling duck used to be and Mr. Bagels and now there's a Reedy's Lobster processing plant. Um, I've noticed that they have, if it was at all possible, made those two buildings uglier than they ever were to begin with. They have managed to put up blockade fences 
a gigantic um, type of propane tank and a big gigantic blockade fence around that. And from what I understand, they're about to add um, maybe another loading dock and they want to put more fencing up there. And that actually is a beautiful view of the marsh also. And I, I know that in the past we've talked about trying to save vistas in Pine Point and Higgins and wherever there's a nice view. And I just wanted to ask you guys, um, maybe sometime when you're going down to get your lobster roll or clam cake or something, swing by there and see if it could possibly get any uglier. Um, between that and the cold, blue cold storage and all those trucks and everything, it looks disgusting down there. And I, I really don't think that um, uh, Prout's Neck would go for that or Higgins Beach, but somehow because Pine Point's sort of a working waterfront, we allow it to really just look terrible. So I'm asking you guys all to consider that. and. Um, to see what we can do about trying to keep the vista before the reedies and the lobster processing plant totally um, barricade it all in. The other thing too is, I guess I probably need to talk to the ordinance committee, but the smell from that processing plant and all the lobster refuse is really overwhelming sometimes. It almost drowns out the marijuana smell from the pot processing plant at Blue, right over by the railroad tracks, which is a great addition to my little town. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else uh, wishing to address the council, please uh, approach the podium. Close public comment. Minutes of May 4, 2016, regular meeting. What's your pleasure? Move approval. Second. <clears throat> Any uh, corrections or adjustments or comments to the minutes of the meeting? All in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Adjustments to the agenda, none this evening. Correct. Uh, items to be signed are the treasurer's warrants, and I will do that later in the evening. <coughs> Order number 16-37, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the renewal request for a special amusement permit from Black Point Inn, located at 510 Black Point Road, Bailey's Campground, located at 274 Pine Point Road, Clambake, located at 352 Pine Point Road. <coughs> Higgins Beach Inn, located at 34 Ocean Avenue. Libby Mitchell Post 76, located at 40 Manson Libby Road. Loyal Order of Moose, located at 19 Spring Street. And The Landing at Pine Point, located at 353 Pine Point Road. Uh, any member of the public wishing to address the council on uh, any of these uh, renewal requests, please take this opportunity to uh, approach the podium. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> uh, inquire of the town clerk if everything is in order. Yes. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Order number 16-38, 7 p.m. public hearing and action on the new request for a food handler's license and a liquor license for Hin, Hin Lee DBA Nara Restaurant located at 238 Gorham Road. Uh, any member of the public wishing to comment on this, please approach the podium. I have a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, any issues with this application? This is actually a purchase uh, it used to be the Shogun, oh. and uh, they're working with the code office <sighs> to bring some items uh, up to our. So otherwise in order? Yes. Or, uh, comments uh, uh, by council members? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Opposed? Order number 16-39, 7 p.m., public hearing and action on the new request for a liquor license from DJIJR, Inc., DBA Salty Bay Seafood Takeout, located at 68 Jones Creek Drive. Uh, any member of the public wishing to comment on this, please approach the podium. May I have a motion? For approval. Second. Discussion. Yes. So I have a question. Um, so my understanding of this particular site, I'm, I'm in favor of it because I think it's a great area. The question I have is that 
Isn't Salty Bay Seafood, it's purely takeout, so how are they serving alcohol as a pure takeout facility? I thought... I believe it is purely takeout. They do have picnic tables, uh, an eating area, oh, they outdoor, do? Oh, okay. Get uh, around the that. back and right. side. Okay. And I believe this part of the establishment will actually occur in a separate building from, uh, still on premises, yep. uh, but a separate mm -hmm. building know, from uh, the restaurant. It is. Thank you. Uh, is this matter uh, have any issues before we act on it? It does not. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. Unanimous? <clears throat> All business. Uh, second reading on the proposed fiscal year 2017 municipal and school budget. Uh, to introduce this matter, I've asked uh, the Finance Committee chairs of the Town Council and the school board to uh, make remarks so as to give everyone a sense of where things are with uh, our two budgets and consolidate it into one budget. Uh, have Great. you decided which of you will go first? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, was Jody taught well, I was taught well. <laughs> Jody Shea is the chair of the Finance Committee of the Board of Education. Thank you, Jody. Thank you, Chairman Donovan. Thank you all for coming out tonight. On April 28th, the school board approved the proposed school budget for FY 2017. Although we had seen some increases in expenditures for insurance and other items that were still in motion when the first reading happened, we were able to absorb those expenses with savings um, in other areas. So we're able to move forward with the budget proposed. The school board's goal has been to develop a credible student-centered budget. This budget achieves that. Our mission-critical budget is a balance between the needs of our students and the desire to invest from our community. These are items that, there are items that we have put on hold until future years, but the 1.3% investment we are proposing is vital to meet the needs of our students and to improve their educational experience. Let me highlight some of those investments for you. There are proposed five full-time full -time equivalent teachers at the high school. These positions are necessary for the high school to move to a more modern schedule. The change will create more flexibility in the student's schedule, allowing them the opportunity to take classes they are passionate about while maintaining their core classes to meet graduation requirements. Many of our students are currently turned away from full classes because we don't have the flexibility or the staff to create additional courses. This investment and changes to the schedule move us in the right direction. We are also proposing one position at Wentworth and one position at the middle school. There are no new staff requests at Blue Point School, at Pleasant Hill School, or at Eight Corner School. The budget also includes an incremental increase in the athletics and activities budget. Investment in uh, professional development time for our teachers and staff are also included. This will reduce the need for additional late starts once fully implemented. We are happy with this budget and we know that these strategic, smart, incremental investments will prepare and benefit our students. So I'd like to thank a few people before I turn it over to Sean. Uh, thank you to the members of both finance committees for their efforts and ideas and time. Um, it's been great to work with all of you, especially Sean, the chair of the Finance Committee. It's been a pleasure. And we've had some great discussions and we've done great work and somehow we've maintained a sense of humor along the way. I also want to thank Dr. Entwistle and Kate Bolton for a great job putting the new narrative budget together with the help of our leadership. It was a large undertaking on already full plates, so thank you. And finally, I think I speak for the whole board when I say thank you to our leadership council. You do an amazing job. And please know that we recognize that, we appreciate that, and we thank you for putting up with our endless questions and comments and ideas. Um, we are very fortunate to have such great leaders in our town, and our kids are the ones that benefit. So thank you again. I'll end by saying uh, please go vote on June 14th. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. <coughs> what am I doing wrong, Tom? <laughs> Put it at the laptop. 
point it at the laptop. You shouldn't. Right behind you. Oh, you shouldn't need to point it. Hmm. Turn on. Yep. Operator <coughs> error. It's not me. <laughs> Sorry, folks. No, I cannot sing and dance. <laughs> I can sing, but we won't even go down the no. path. So uh, first, I uh, just want to say thank you very much. Um, so, um, sorry, I'm going to get thinking here. I always, believe it or not, I've been doing this for 15 years, and I still get nervous getting up and talking in front of everybody. Um, so what I want to do today is, before I get into some of the details, is really explain that this is truly, my presentation part of this is truly a look at one budget. It is not breaking out um, any particular department by itself, but really including the educational department, which has typically been separated as for discussion purposes and for um, criticism in the past, um, and really look at the entire budget as a whole and the impact of the community. This past year, the council set as its goal five critical criteria that relates to the budget. First, we pledged that we wanted to continue the budget, what we, I call the budget transformation process. We began that last year with the development of a joint standing committee of two of our two finance committees along with the resources of our staff to begin talking about what is included in that budget and what is not included in that budget and try to find some norms around the discussion that needed to be entailed. Um, we want to also um, invest in incremental increases in the services that we deliver. Um, we want to focus on the valuation projections that we um, have from year to year because they can um, be extremely um, unpredictable, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, and the valuation, by the way, that is the tax assessed valuation. That's the, the full value of our community, because uh, that plays a critical role in the calculation of our tax rate. Um, we also chose to strive for around or below a 3% tax impact. Um, we talked about a consistent and sustainable tax impact, and then talked about developing benchmarking metrics, which I'll get into a little bit of that, um, just some outlines, because that is really what's going to happen, I think, in the next stage of our budget transformation process. Um, so while I want to jump to the bottom line, because the community in itself generally only talks about what is the net appropriation, what is going to be the tax rate, I think it's important to talk about one small piece that's not on this slide, and that is what is the top line. The top line is that this total, um, this budget this year is a total of $81.7 million. It is a 3.95% increase over last year from a total, that's before any application of any revenues from any source. The bottom line is that we're asking for $60,330,578 to be funded by the appropriation of our taxes. That's a 3.98% increase. The, the valuation which goes into that calculation is the unpredictable piece, and we're having conversations about how we can improve our models basically the formula that we use um, in predicting this. At the moment, the way that the town has historically um, set its projection is through the town manager's experience and expertise in setting that. Um, his, and I'll show you a chart on this a little bit later, his current projection is um, a conservative projection of $3.776 billion, or $3,776 million. The best and most, um, I, I would call, progressive or aggressive calculation could be as high as um, $3,794 million. That is actually a 0.8% increase over last year and, or up to 1.3. I'll show you a couple other predictions that we're making as well. So within that range, we have a projected mill rate of anywhere from $15.98 to $15.90. That is a $0.49 cents to $0.41 cents increase over last year. It is a range of 3.16% to 2.65. Keep in mind that as the assessed valuation goes up, your tax rate goes down as a percentage over last year. Um, as well as um, the other factor is that as the amount of your appropriation, the $60 million, as that goes down, that can also impact and decrease your, um, decrease your tax rate as well. Just to highlight the budget transformation process, because this is something that we have committed to as part of the changes that we want to make um, to how this community has a dialogue. We're really looking at what we're calling a 135 process. 
We're in year two. We undertook this process last year uh, where we're identifying the new processes, uh, practices, and some of the policies around how we work together. We want to institutionalize the changes and begin to analyze those changes starting next year and really then start drawing inferences from the metrics and the dashboards and start defining what we want to use on a regular basis to see where we are growing and how we're growing and are we achieving the success that we want from our spending. Regarding incremental increases in services this year's budget, I'll simply label as I consider to be a um, material impact and improvement in services. Um, some might call it a pretty um, moderate rate of investment. In education, there is a pure investment of about $590,000 that includes six and a half new staff. Um, that also absorbs the loss in state educational funding of $1.1 million. That is a significant issue to take into consideration because when you think about what a 2.65% increase would be, think of that it would be extremely much, much lower if we received that additional funding from education from the state of Maine. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you, but I think it's going to be, if we ever did get that money, it's about, the tax rate would actually almost stay flat. The tax rate would almost stay flat. Public safety is receiving approximately $326,000 in new investment, um, based as well as um, two additional firefighters and EMTs and two patrol officers. We heard very telling stories from our police chief and fire chief about the need that we have. Um, I think that everyone can agree just a short experience of driving Route 1 every day. You'll see what the need is um, for um, all the accidents that we see, the speeders and everything else. Um, there, we are at a critical mass for both of those organizations. There's also additional investment in public works, planning, and community services in the hiring of a sustainability coordinator. That's a net um, investment of $61,000. We're using some efficiencies in realigning resources. Um, the, the real cost is about $75,000, but we're realigning resources, and it only requires $61,000 more. And then the town administration, we're also investing in approximately $84,500 for a new assistant town manager who will also act as a purchasing agent. The two critical uh, components that the Finance Committee heard and accepted with the manager's recommendation on those two last positions that both of them will be required to document what their true savings are to our community so that we can put a dollar value to the work that they do. Because I think what we're going to see, particularly in the purchasing agent, a significant reinvestment in the community and, and a cost reduction or at least a cost avoidance savings um, regarding some of our major uh, activities. Assessed valuations, um, so I had to be a little comical. Um, and how we predict it is pretty much uh, putting your hands over your eyes and throwing a dart at a dartboard and hoping that you get it correct. There's a lot of chance and there's a lot of risk in that evaluation. What I'm showing here, or what I'm showing here is really what I call a more conser uh, conservative estimate. That is um, the town manager's estimate of $30 million increase. Um, again, that shows at the very end, the last row, the 3.16%. The most, conserv uh, the most progressive or aggressive um, might suggest a 1.41% increase of about $52.8 million. That would lead to a 2.54% increase in our tax rate. Somewhere in between those, our goal as a finance committee and as a council, I believe, is going to be how do we define that going forward so that we can use it as a predictable measure, at least for the budgetary purposes. Keep in mind that um, while you don't want to be too low, you also want to make sure you're not too high and the reason is if you go uh, too aggressive, um, you may end up backtracking and actually rather than predicting, it, predicting a lower increase, you're actually ending up having to have a higher increase because you've over projected. So it's how do we define that? And um, you know, the, right now, I believe that some of us are pretty comfortable in the 10-year average of what our increase is, which is about 1.3%. Um, again, this budget pro uh, proposed is a 2.65% increase overall. The next step, um, which is not yet defined, is really is about benchmarking, and there's really three factors to take into consideration. Um, I'm not going to go into each of these, I promise, and I don't have charts on each of them, but there's things that we're going to need to look at, and that's everything, including population growth, uh, uh, business growth, employment growth, um, you know, and then looking at financial factors, you know, what is our revenue streams and how are they impacted, where are our expenditures, what's our debt structure, um, and then what's the condition of the infrastructure that we're trying to invest so that it increases the value of our community. And then looking at the management practices and the legislative policies that support that is the, is the critical factor behind it. Why benchmarking is important, so here's one item that I do know that um, Standard & Poor's actually uses as a measure in how they provide a credit rating for the town of Scarborough. So this is actually a very normal curve. 
and what this is telling us is that as we raise um, our um, revenue, we are spending, but not spending more than the actual revenue. What you don't want to see here is the two um, cross each other so that you are either um, increasing expenses faster than you're increasing your revenue or that you are decreasing your expenses too fast and therefore having too much of a surplus. So this is a perfect curve for the town of Scarborough. Now keep in mind the reason why I, pr I showed this is really even as we set benchmarks going forward, how you interpret them is um, I think debatable amongst different people. You know, statistics are, are um, set in order to um, support or um, go against a particular argument. So the reason why I picked this one to show you is that what this doesn't show you is the impact of our business community. Because in the per capita, that's only the population of our residents and not the significant population of our employees that come to town, that work in town, as well as the businesses and the impact that they have to both the expenses that we need to support them and the revenue that we receive. So you need to look at more than just one particular benchmark in order to understand where we're moving. And that is the next step that we're taking. So there's been a lot of conversation about this um, fiscal cliff that Scarborough is coming up to. Um, I don't necessarily look at it as being a cliff. It's only a cliff if we don't prepare ourselves for it. And um, the fact is that we're now dealing with economic, external economic conditions that are impacting us. And primarily that impact is what I call the elephant in the room, and it's state educational funding. Since 2009, educational funding from the state of Maine has decreased $3.5 million. This past year alone, it's about $1.1 million. And for us to get to what we call a minimal receivership, and that is where we're really only receiving funding for special education, um, we would lose about an additional $1.6 million. And it's something that we need to face um, now because eventually we will get there because our community is growing. Um, the fact that our evaluation, uh, sorry, our valuations are increasing um, is a significant contributor to the fact of why we're losing state educational funding, especially when other areas of the state are decreasing because of the loss in the mills and their own economic problems that we have but it is something that we have to face and we have to plan for. The goal of the council, um, going back to that about 3% um, range, is how do we then react over time to our budget? This graph here shows you that since 2006, it's been a pretty volatile roller coaster. We've been as low as zero and as high as 7%. The goal is that what we want to do is what's really happening since 2015, and that's where we try to level that out so that our reaction is somewhere in between 2 and 4% so that we're constantly being able to at least monitor our progress, have consistent investment in our community. The red line, just so that you know, is our behavior curve and how we've reacted. That's a pretty sharp curve, but at least shows you that towards the end, we're now falling within the range or within that scope that we want to be at where we're consistent within that two to four percent. The very last piece, if you look at it, it's actually orange. Um, that, is the in, sorry, that is the impact um, depending upon where that assessed valuation comes in. The uh, 3.16 is based upon um, the manager's conservative um, estimate. The red line, which is the 2.65, is where if you want to subscribe that it might be more aggressive, that's where it is, and it shows you that leveling off and the smoothing out of that um, investment curve. And that's exactly, I think, what we want to try to see. Last, why this is all important, the good news is, is that um, while some of us um, or some people have tried to um, uh, picture or tried to paint a picture of um, declining economies and declining community services and uh, increasing tax rates that are unbearable, the fact is, is that we're finding from our um, credit raters is that Scarborough is in a very strong position. Uh, Standard & Poor's recently upgraded our credit rating from AA to AA+. The items that they actually uh, mentioned in that are a strong institutional framework within Scarborough, strong debt and contingent liability position, meaning that we are aligned ourselves both um, from a fund balance perspective to cover liabilities that um, aren't necessarily on the books but we know could come depending upon certain economic conditions. Very strong liquidity, which is uh, back, again back to the fund balance. We have budget flexibility, uh, strong budget performance and we have very strong management with good financial policies and practices along with a strong local economy. So I think that this is the true, te true, um, true tell of what we are doing and how we're doing it and why it is important. Um, we are currently waiting for um, a response from Moody's and we're hoping for the same positive. Just to give you some perspective, the last time that we experienced a change in our credit rating, it actually went down 
and that was in 2011, which was immediately after the 2010, um, I don't want to call it a crash, but the drastic changes that we had to make to our budget, in which then the credits, um, credit agencies downgraded us, and we're now since uh, going back up. The importance of this is that um, this rating alone, and if I get the number correctly, I believe it's for every $10 million dollars that we borrow, it saves us approximately $100,000 in interest expenses that can be spent elsewhere. So um, we're always looking for a stronger rating. Last, I just want to say thank you um, really to all the members of the committee. Um, you know, <laughs> I had to go out and uh, kind of stalk <laughs> Facebook and a few other areas to get some pictures. Um, Kate Bolton was the hardest one to find, but I got her. <laughs> but I do want to say uh, thank you to uh, Jody Shea, my counterpart and co-facilitator of the joint meeting. Uh, Chris, who joined us this year on our side of the town council, he was actually on the committee last year. Uh, Christine Messengill, Peter Hayes, and Carrie. But most importantly to our staff, Tom, George, Ruth, and Kate, thank you very much. It's been a, a very um, significant change in our process, and I think it truly represents what we would call one community with one budget. And just want to say thank you. Um, again, please go and vote. There's actually two questions this year on the um, referendum. First is that we're hoping that you approve the fiscal year 17 school budget um, that has been presented. And then also there is a question about whether or not we wish to discontinue the school budget referendum process. That's a question that is required to be asked, I believe, every three years, and this is the third year. And so please go and vote at the high school on June 14th. The polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 8. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Babine. Uh, we wanted to make that presentation uh, first before we took public comment, just so that the public would have the opportunity to understand uh, uh, on an overview basis uh, where the budget was and how it was constructed. At this point, uh, anyone wishing to address the town council uh, on the budget, please you can uh, proceed to the podium and those uh, who would like to follow this gentleman can line right up and we'll go right one after another. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Larry Hartwell and I'm Puritan Drive. Uh, just a couple of remarks uh, to follow the finance chair. I uh, mentioned the reduction in the state funding, which is a continual thing that's been going on and, and will continue going on, as he says, we'll get there. And he mentioned the financial cliff. What I was surprised that wasn't mentioned is the surplus funds from the Wentworth bond, the $1.6 million that is being used in the 2016 budget to offset some of the increases. That's a one-time Figure. It's not going to be there in the in the following years, and I I think that's left out of discussion, and, and certainly something that most taxpayers are not familiar with. Um, I've got a couple of areas to talk about. I didn't come up here to um, speak for approval of the budget or against the budget tonight. So um, my first one is uh, I think I'll call it to improve the public's understanding of the budget. Um, it's always discussed in mill rate, as it was tonight, and in dollars. And I doubt that there's 15 or 20 people in here that really understand all the mechanics of mill rates and budget increases. Um, so I'd like to see um, annual budgets not limited just to a discussion of mill rates in the future. Uh, it's an important metric in the town's <coughs> finances. It's a way to make the actual, but it's also a way to make the dollar actual dollar increases look much smaller than it is. For example, the 6 or 8 percent annual increase in the school budget each of the last two years translates into only a 3.3 to 4 percent increase in the annual mill rate. This sleight of hand is possible largely due to our good fortune in Scarborough. And this was mentioned, we have increases in, in commercial real estate and businesses in our, our town. And we're seeing, as it was mentioned earlier, 30 or 40 million dollars of valuation increase every year. Uh, we're very fortunate to have that. As we all know, many towns have lost mills, they've lost other businesses, and their valuation has actually gone down. Uh, and so we've had this increase, and it certainly we're fortunate for that. Um, so over the last three years, our town valuation has increased by about $100 million. $100 million. And yet the taxable value has been consumed by spending, and we've had to increase the mill rate by three or four percent each year, which is about 12 percent over three three years. 
Um, so I think if we were showing it in dollars, like like businesses do, like we do at home, we say, okay, last year we spent 100 million, uh, we spent 10 million dollars. We want an increase, or we want to keep the increase to three percent, and it should be a three percent increase on that that dollar amount as opposed to the mill rate. <coughs> I think that would be much clearer to to uh, the public. And I see, am I still? I've got a minute left. Hmm. And the other area is, is the budget. We've, we've uh, the budget process. Um, unlike last year, I've had not, have not had an opportunity to, to uh, observe most of the, the budget discussion this year. However, I've attended a few council and school board meetings, budget workshops, and, and looked at the budget uh, document. So my comments are derived from those experiences. As a taxpayer, I was very concerned by the general response to the council of the first budget reading. The impression I and others had was some victory was being celebrated. We'd been successful. Our goals had been met, as if this was the conclusion of the budget process. But you're right. Both the municipal and school budgets presented at that time have either remained unchanged or increased, just like last year. We've been told by council and school board the budget process has changed this year, and so it has, and the process seems to be the major importance to everyone. However, the results have not changed. Since the council and school board are satisfied with the results, may I make a suggestion next year, a process change. Let's have the second reading and approval four weeks after the first reading. This will save a, mile, a tremendous amount of council time and uh, finance committee time, along with the staff and administrators. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Morris Holton on 10 Snowberry Drive. Uh, I'd like to just make a couple of comments about the long-range debt service. It was just slightly touched on one of the slides, but I think it's very astounding that in a year that we didn't think we had a lot of big debt being built up, that we just... Uh, bought $7.1 million in new debt. That was about three weeks ago when Mooney came out with our, our new bonds to sell, and the coupon rate is 4%. Now, what was this $7.5 million for? The only information I have, and I didn't dig too deep because I just used Mooney's information, it was for a debt service, $3.8 million, and capital improvements for $3.8 million. Okay, the first thing kind of puzzles me. It's a revolving wheel. We're borrowing money at 4% to pay on our debt that's already out there. In other words, when it's like going to one credit card and paying it off by putting it on another credit card. That's about what's happening. So the town is recycling our debt. And in that same article by Mooney's, they said our debt was $92 million. With the 7.5 added to it, now we're up to $99.75 million. And Mr. Babine mentioned that casually the debt service for this new budget is only around ten million. Only around ten million. I think that's exactly the word they use. But it actually is very he's very close. It's it's two point it's it's about ten million that we're not gonna have to use for any improvements in this town. We're still paying off the excess spending in past years, which none of you are really responsible for, but we've got to start somewhere of not continuing to grow this debt, which, by the way, is $5,100 per person in this town, substantially higher than any other communities with, uh, within a 10-mile radius. And 
some of those shots were shown by the town, even in many, that we have one of the biggest debt services uh, in, the com in the greater community. So I guess what I'm saying is I hate to see additional annual obligations being increased when we're living off of our debt from the Wentworth School. That's what we're living off of. We already paid for it. We've been paying $90,000 a year for that money. It's been sitting around for a couple of years, so we might as well spend it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane. Um, I would like to start with congratulations. Um, you guys set, set a number, set a goal to a number, and you met that goal. And uh, that's not easy to do. And you should be really proud, um, both from the council perspective and the school board perspective. Um, it's a number I can definitely get behind and support, and I intend to. Um, but I just want to put this out there because I think it's important to say. It's not to say, because I'm going to support this budget and I'm going to vote for it, that I agree with every minute detail along the way. Um, and I think that we should be careful um, when, we're, when we are thinking about the long term. But that's why you're in those seats and that's why you're in those seats. So you hit the number, um, and now you've got to do it again the next, year, next two years. And we, as your constituents, are going to hold you to that. Um, and I think you can do that. One other comment I wanted to make, um, and I've mentioned to this to Chairman Beely in the past, uh, I've spent the bulk of my well, the last 20 years anyway uh, working with at-risk teens in residential settings, uh, public and private educational settings, and so, for, so mostly the nonprofit world. Um, so I understand the need to constantly be playing the money game and constantly be raising funds. One of the investments I hope that the school board will consider, um, I'm thrilled that the high school is getting so many teachers back. My niece is starting the high school, so selfishly, uh, my family benefits. Um, but that's not the right reason to support something. Uh, so I hope one of the investments that we'll consider is a full-time development professional, somebody who could be not just writing grants, but really out there uh, building more, even stronger. I think we have a lot of strong relationships in town. I think they could be even stronger. Um, I think we need to plan for no receivership, not minimal receivership. We, this town is a town that could do it. Uh, other towns and rural areas, they could never support their school systems in, another, in a more creative way. Uh, they just don't have the resources. But I think Scarborough does. So I hope that's an investment. I think that person, that position, uh, while it might take away from the ability to hire a full-time teacher, would pay for itself and then some. That's it. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Susan Hamill, and I live on Bay Street in Pine Point. And um, just to try to start off with something positive, I have to say when I was driving over here tonight on Route 1 across the marsh, um, just was a reminder to me of how lucky we are to be here, to live here in this town. So. But I'm really here to talk about uh, the, the six new positions that have been added on the municipal side of the budget. And um, I don't like the fact that they were added, and I don't like the way they were added. Uh, they weren't really in the first budget. They were talked about um, in the document, but the decision was made not to, not to put them forward. And it seems like you put something in the first budget, in the first reading, and then maybe you take it out later. You don't leave it out of the first budget, the first reading, and then add it later. <coughs> and I know that, that um, there was no big outcry, public outcry about the budget. I mean, 3% is pretty good. Um, so maybe the town manager or the council reconsidered and thought, well, maybe uh, we could just get these six positions that we've been wanting for a long time, we could sneak these in. And, uh, and I realize that the budget is a work in process and that the revenues become clearer as time goes by. And, um, but how could so much change in six weeks? Suddenly there's $450,000 in new money that wasn't there uh, when we had the first reading. <coughs> So I think that there's a few factors that, that I really hope that you think about as you 
make a decision about these six positions. First is something that other people have talked about, um, is just how indebted we already are in this town. And this is the, the curve that Sean didn't show, is the 5000 over $5,000 in debt per person, $100 million that we have long-term debt. We talk about, we, we know we have in the five-year capital plan a new public safety building, a library expansion. And I don't know how we're going to do that. I mean, if we found $450,000, why not pay down some of that debt or maybe not have such a high rate of increase in our tax? The third thing is the, this year we're using bonds, bond money, to pay some operating expenses, that, the money that was left over from Wentworth. And that isn't going to be around next year. So we're, you know, I, I feel like we're setting ourselves up for a really big hit next year, that this, the, these new positions, is this really sustainable? Will we uh, have the money next year to continue this? And I, I think it's really short-sighted and foolish not to think about what impact this will have next year. And um, besides the fact that it was really, I view it as it was done in a sneaky way, it was pretty quiet, not a lot of public focus at right now on the budget. Everyone thought, great budget, you know, patting everyone on the back and good deal, congratulations. And yeah, I guess it's an achievement that we only came in at 3% increase, but um, we could have done we could have done better, and we really need to be thinking about next year and the year after. And um, sustainability coordinator is one of the jobs, and I have to say, I, mean, I when I had heard about this, and and I know it's been talked about, why not a couple of summer interns? Why not, um, you know? Does this need to be a full-time position? <coughs> and I know that the assistant town manager, one of, the, one of the responsibilities is something that Tom Hall had put in for our um, auditors to do some of the analysis and some of the, the benchmarking. Some of those things, we're paying someone else already in next year's audit to prepare some of that material. So why, uh, I mean, $84,000 for an assistant town manager, um, I'm, I'm not happy. Thanks. Thank you. Drew Stevens, 6 Surrey Lane. Um, I just wanted to start by saying thank you to the town council and the school board. Um, I'm sure you've gotten plenty of wonderfully supportive emails in the last month or so. Um, but I think a lot of times people, when they don't like something, they bark a lot, and when they do like something, they tend to just sit back and be happy with it. But you should know there's a lot of people that have been paying attention, and the whole process this year, and I don't know if this is what you were getting at when you were talking about the process, um, Jody and uh, Councilor Babine, but it's it's been so much more um, collaborative, and the discussions that you've had, and explaining to the town exactly what's going in the budget. Um, I actually think you've been very forthright, and the sheets that you gave out, the one sheet at the first reading, made it very clear to just a layperson who's, you know, I don't want to get caught up in the weeds of all the numbers because I think that's what your jobs are and what the school board's doing, but it made it very clear to people exactly what you were looking to do and how you were going about achieving that, and I think you did a good job with that. Um, I personally would love to see a lot more money put into the schools. I think it's money well spent. I think it makes our town better. I think it helps the children. And I, I don't think there's a lot of spending going on that's not justified. So that's my personal belief, but I know that's not reasonable for the town to expect to do that. So what you're doing with incremental increases to both the school budget as well as the police chief would rather have X amount, but he's settling for what he can get. The fire chief would rather have X amount, but he's settling. Everybody's working together to say, what can we do to kind of deal with the growth of our town? And I think you're being responsible from what you're telling us about the future um, and how you're preparing for that. Um, I know personally, I've talked to quite a few people that have told me really positive experiences they've had with the computers in the high school. 
It's a perfect example. Last year, it was a really contentious issue that a lot of people had a problem with. Now nobody's talking about it, but it's been successful. It's worked. And I think a, a friend of mine who lives in town that works with a company that hires people, he was laughing at the fact that you're just getting computers now. It's 2015. So there's a whole range of viewpoints about how important these things are, but that's clearly a program that's worked. And I think you deserve credit for that, and the school board deserves credit for pushing for that. Um, and going forward, I, I just hope this continues, that this effort of the school board and the town working together and trying to come up with a budget that everybody is willing to compromise on, nobody's getting exactly what they want, but everybody is benefiting. Um, and it looks like you're doing that and you're working in the right direction. So um, a lot of us notice that and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Stacy Newman. I live at 17 Windsor Pines Drive. I never should have let Drew go first because he says everything I want to say much more <laughs> eloquently, but nonetheless, I was in line, so I'll stay here. Um, I, I, I want to really give a congratulations to the process. I was commenting, I was thinking to myself when I was watching Councillor Babine's presentation um, how you answered you know, questions I didn't even realize I had, but once I got the information, I was really glad to have it. I mean, I, I think that just shows your thinking in the weeds, in depth, but also able to step back and really give information that we as citizens appreciate. Um, and I just think that process is terrific. I think it's amazing that you set this goal and were able to achieve it, particularly with the lack of funds from the state. I know that's a remarkable achievement. I'm with Drew. I wish there was more in the school budget. I wish that there was more than six positions needed. I know that the high school needs more. Um, I'm thrilled that seventh grade sports were added. I really think we need to get foreign language in for younger age groups. I think we're really behind in that. But this is a compromised budget, and you guys did a great job. And you can't give every, everybody what they want, and um, I recognize that. So uh, I want to thank you for your hard work. I um, will support this budget um, and really support the process. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alex Mamberduk, uh, 15 Bayberry Lane in Scarborough here. Um, and uh, I think this is a good budget. I don't think it goes far enough to uh, dig out from the years of school underfunding, sort of in the post-recession years. Um, but I realize you're working very hard uh, to cope with the state's cuts to education and revenue sharing, not to mention the new costs and mandates they've been pushing onto towns and uh, uh, municipalities. and. Uh, 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 property taxes by extension of that. Um, I think it's pretty hard to overstate uh, just how central that problem is to the tension that we face here in Scarborough. You know, if they're funding, you know, 55 percent, uh, just just taking that one, you know, issue of, you know, if they were actually funding the 55 percent that they uh, are supposed to be funding for education costs in the state of Maine, that would be another four to five million dollars uh, here in state funding for education just in Scarborough, and we probably wouldn't really be having this conversation and it probably wouldn't be much of a crowd here tonight because everybody would probably be pretty satisfied. Um, all that being said, uh, I support this budget um, and I hope I get the uh, chance to vote in, it in June on it and to say yes. So, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to comment? Hi, my name is Wallace Fengler. I live on Holmes Road in Scarborough. I'd like to uh, add a few comments. Some some of them I've already heard. One of them was the uh, um, over a million dollars from the surplus from the Wentworth School, which is bonded money. And I don't, if, to me, it would be prudent to use that to reduce the debt rather than use that to do expenses because you're paying interest on that. Um, I, I'm in support of the school, but I've just figured out that uh, from what I heard, there was it cost $13,000 plus to educate each child. And when you build a new house, you're not getting that much revenue. So the town built over 100 housing units this year, times $13,000 if you just had one child per house. So one of the ways 
for my mind to keep from having budgets to just keep going up out of control is to have <coughs> constant growth rather than a big increase in growth. And I see the Eastern Village and I see uh, Layton Farms, big projects that are built fast and add a lot of housing units and then you have more expenses for the school and then you need more money. And it's uh, a losing proposition because I'm, I'm a retired person on a fixed income. My income actually went down because my health benefits went up and so did my copay. So at the same time, senior citizens are saying, I don't know how much longer I can live in Scarborough. If they move out of Scarborough and a younger family moves in that has children, then you got $13,000 or more in uh, expenses. So that's one observation. Um, the thing that I would like to question is I read about the Eastern Trail uh, connection to South Portland, $3.6 million, and I'm not sure why it's in the school budget. At least that's what I looked at when I was looking through the uh, website. So I'm not, it might be under the municipal side, but I'm one of the founders of the Scarborough Land Trust, and we built all of the trails pretty much in Scarborough with volunteer labor. The Saco Pathfinder Snowmobile Club built a beautiful bridge over the Nonsuch River that connects Mitchell Hill and Holmes Road. There's a trail that goes all the way across the river, all the way over to Burnham Road through the Fuller Farm. and. Uh, I think it could be done with volunteer labor and if it isn't being done with volunteer labor then probably there is not a lot of demand for it. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mo Erickson. I live on the Pine Point Road. I just have so many questions. Um, I guess uh, it is the student population actually increasing in Scarborough or is it decreasing? I'm just curious. The opportunity to speak is not to question, okay. but rather well, to okay. give your comments. Um, Thank you. And, you know, I, I, I love firemen and policemen just like everybody else, but do we really need more? That's <clears throat> another question. I mean, I want them to come to my house when I have a problem or, or anything, but I just question if we, if we really need more. Um, do we need to have another expansion of the library? It seems like every year we're having an expansion of the library. I know one year they put those the brick round circle in the front and then the next year they took the brick round circle out. I hope that's not how we're spending all our money. I know down on the dock in Pine Point we put a new lift up for the lobstermen, but oh, we forgot that material that we use, it's, um, it gets rusty. We didn't realize it was going to be exposed to salt water. So we had to put a new one in. Boy, I, I hope we can rethink the way we spend some of our money. Then I read somewhere in the paper um, about $100,000 um, $100, allocated for a, a pickle court, pickleball court. I, I, don't, I don't even know what a pickleball court is, but I guess somebody does. Somebody plays it. And we're also going to spend money on a bocce, uh, bocce ball court. That's what the beach is for. Go down and take your bocce ball, set down the beach. And also an outdoor chess set. How about if we take the um, Betty's Park, those granite, granite stone chairs that we have over by the old, um, where Betty's Luncheon used to be. They put these five or six granite stone stools there for a park. I've never seen anyone sit there. Let's move those stools and put them wherever this chess, outdoor chess set park is going to be. Again, I, I just question, how could we spend money like this? Uh, I know that next, next October I'm going to look at my tax bill and it's, it's going to be up again. Everyone talks about these um, incremental increases. Do we ever have incremental decreases in Scarborough? So when we get this extra money, can't we just put it away and not spend it? I know I'm not supposed to ask all those questions, but I'd love answers for some of them. Thank you. Thank you.
Uh, I am Ben Keller of 5 Sandy Point Road here in Scarborough. Um, I'll just talk real briefly, um, echoing what you've heard from a number of speakers this evening already. Uh, I just want to thank all of you guys, um, all of the counselors and all of the folks in the finance committee and the school board and the leadership for creating budget in what must have been pretty difficult circumstances given the lack of money from the state um, and several other hurdles. Um, I personally, as a father of two boys in the system, don't think it goes far enough, but again, we all understand that compromise you know, nobody gets what they want, then it's a great deal, right? So, um, so the compromise, you know, as I see it, is is make it primarily a level services budget um, with a small increase to help, as uh, Jody said, create these classes for passionate students. But it goes further than that, I think. Um, these uh, this will increase the student or decrease the student-teacher ratios, which is super important for learning. Um, and it'll provide classes that'll increase uh, the college acceptance of our kids, um, and also the merit-based financial opportunities that they'll be able to receive, um, as well as lift our town and school's rankings, which is obviously hugely important. Um, you know, it goes without saying, and uh, it's a drum that I will always bang for Scarborough or whatever town that I live in, that you know, great schools increase the valuation of our town in general. And what better investment can we make than in our kids and in our town at the exact same time? So I really appreciate that you've kept it level with this late increase. And um, I'm really hoping for a great turnout and a positive vote. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments from the public? Seeing none, we close the public hearing. Uh, the board has before it uh, the first reading uh, uh, motion uh, for adoption of the budget. Uh, amendments uh, are in order, and I would look to the Finance Committee Chair to commence that process. Thank you. I, I beg your pardon. I think the main motion should, main motion should be moved right. first. My yeah. mistake in that so amendment. Do I hear second. a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, and I'll recognize the Finance Committee Chair. Thank you. Um, I would uh, move approval to amend the main motion to accept the Finance Committee's recommendation, or sorry, recommended adjustments to the proposed fiscal year 2017 budget in the amount of $66,901 for, for a new net budget of $60,330,578 to amend Chapter 311 um, schedule of fees to include a provision related to metered parking at Higgins Beach along Bayview and to require town staff to continue working with the Senior Advisory Committee in the design and siting of the Senior Recreation Area Capital Project within Memorial Park and that the final recommendation be reviewed and approved by the Town Council. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, discussion, uh, Mr. Chair? Thank you. Um, so um, just to kind of uh, on a high level basis to explain the process that we undertook this year and how we got to that recommendation. Um, we followed a very similar process last year. We had approximately um, 11 meetings. Last year we had 13. The last two we felt uh, weren't necessary, which was a joint session between the school, full school board and the full town council because we had pretty much come to a consensus um, as well as um, we did not have a final joint session. But we did have those 11 meetings, and that was both the Joint Committee as well as the Town Council's Finance Committee. Um, during those sessions, um, we did have um, an opportunity for anyone who wished to speak um, at, um, in public session. Um, I believe, I, maybe the committee members, I don't believe anyone spoke. In fact, maybe one, um, and I think that was the only person that actually came to the meeting um, of all those 11. We did also have our public forum. This year we had, I believe, last year we had about 150 total. This year we had um, 20, 19, 20, or 21, somewhere in, in that range. Um, we fielded the questions that were asked of us um, to the full length, and we, the ones that we weren't able to answer, we did provide a response and had all of this information provided online through our new portal, which was asked of us to better communicate through a dedicated uh, one-source site for both the school and the town. Um, 
in the final um, discussion, um, we did take into consideration the manager's recommendations for new staff that were not necessarily proposed. Um, that presentation was consistent with last year's presentation. We asked him to present us a level services budget and then to propose um, additional new ads to staff as a secondary piece so that we can then consider what that level services is and then what the additional investment would be. As a result of uh, better projections around excise tax, um, other revenue sources and other uh, considerations, the net adjustment for the six positions that the town, even though I showed you all those numbers, the net impact is only an increase on the budget of $66,901. The other two non-monetary pieces um, we felt were necessary. One was because um, including the metered parking section on the fee schedule allows actually the budget process to dictate the review of that information. It was a very contentious issue last year just on it by itself outside of the budget, but we wanted that to be part of it. It will be listed in the schedule of, of um, fees as being free while the manager implements um, that program in its first year, and then we will review and evaluate that um, as part of the budget to determine where that should go. And the second piece is that after hearing some um, consideration from citizens regarding the Senior Advisory Committee's recommendation for the uh, rec area, um, right now it is an estimate. The $100,000 is an estimate that would be dedicated to building a site that would allow different um, sports activities that are centered and focused on senior activities, um, you know, the 55 plus community. Where that is going to be located and how much that's actually going to cost was a focus of our conversation and we asked that that final recommendation come forward. You know, we recognize that that $100,000 is only an estimate and we expect it potentially to be considerably lower if it's relocated to a more centralized location <coughs> that some of us may prefer. Um, and again, that's going to come to us later. It's important to note that that amount was not part of the <coughs> net appropriation. That $100,000 is actually a um, part of the capital budget um, and it would have been bonded. So it, has not, it does not impact the actual tax rate at this time because it is not um, being approved until later. So that's how we kind of got ourselves to that. And I'd, you know, if anybody else from the committee, if I miss something, can add, it would be helpful. Okay. Good. Good. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, recognize both of the uh, Finance Committee members at this time for the opportunity to give some context to the Finance Committee process. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll limit my comments to, uh, to Council comments uh, and, and save my, my responses from the podium for, for at the end of the meeting. Um, a couple things, you know, we've, we've discussed internally a few different ways of looking at projected valuation. Um, I, I do think that that's, that's important for us in our, in our decision-making process, but I think as Councillor Babine laid out, regardless of your philosophy or your thoughts on how we should be projecting that, um, I think we're, whichever method you choose, I think we've effectively met our, our, uh, our goal of the 3%, uh, around the 3%, because once that other valuation comes in, I think we'll probably be a little higher than that. So um, recognizing that there are a couple of different ways of looking at that, I do think that that's something that we take up next year in finance as a procedural matter, not necessarily to pin an exact number on it, um, but to put a policy or, or at least a guideline in place so that we're not putting the town manager in the unfortunate position of having to speculate uh, a very wide range of, of figures. So I'm, I'm hoping that's something that, um, while I don't think it really has an impact on this budget, I think it is a valid question to discuss for future processes. Um, our reliance on state education funding, we've all discussed that internally um, in many meetings at many times. I think we've done a very good job uh, in this process with hoping for the best, but planning for the worst. Um, I, I, I do compliment the other non-finance uh, non committee members for certainly meeting offline and asking the questions that I thought were very important and, and pertinent to helping them understand the process and, and what our ultimate goals were. But again, I think this is a very responsible approach to uh, future budgeting and future situations that we know, quite frankly, even with an increase in educational funding, we're not going to get the majority of our educational uh, expenditures met by the state. That's just the reality of the situation. And, and I think we are um, taking that into consideration, especially with this budget and how we do that. Um, I'll remind um, councilors that, again, one of our goals was not just a 3% or at or near 3%. Our longer term goal is a predictable and sustainable tax rate. And 3% is not an arbitrary number. We did our analysis. We looked at this historical averages. 
And that's a number that we kind of all landed on after some debate and some discussion on a realistic number. Um, while it's, um, it's always good to try and get below that, I think 3% is reasonable, and I think that 3% uh, moving forward is a good benchmark and a good goal to have. I think it allows us in positive financial uh, uh, times to, to take that additional money and invest it, and in downturns it allows us to have that reserve built up and keep that sustainability and that predictability in there so we don't have the giant cycling. So I think this budget meets that expectation as well. Debt service, um, you know, we certainly tackled that in finance. It is definitely um, an outlier in terms of where we stand compared to surrounding communities. But again, um, having the debt service, uh, the, the, the bond expert come in and ex describe to us where we are in terms of uh, the ratio to our valuation, uh, certainly having Standard & Poor's and Moody evaluate us positively is a pretty good outside indication that we're managing our, uh, our finances very effectively and very prudently. So while it does appear like a very large number, um, as we retire old debt, we, um, we're being very, very uh, prudent, I think, and very um, uh, uh, deliberate in how we're bringing on new debt. Not everything in capital is funded by purely bonding. We, we do have some other means of funding in there. We've actually used some of the fund balance in this mechanism as well. So capital is not a direct translation to bonding. So I would remind counselors of that as well. Um, other than that, I, I do want to thank uh, each and every one of you for, uh, for this process. This is the fourth budget cycle I've been through now. It's certainly a different perspective sitting on this side of the table as opposed to sitting out in the, in the audience and waiting for the, for the proverbial shoe to drop. Um, but the change has been noticeable this year, uh, not just amongst the Finance Committee, but in the general discussion of the Council. I, and I want to thank each of you for, for your professionalism and your, and your courtesy and your willingness to, to have a, a very frank and, and civil debate around issues and concerns. So uh, I will be supporting the budget as it's presented now, and I look forward to um, hopefully everybody doing the same. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and I think to kind of keep it short, I think I kind of have a macro and a micro view. From, from a macro view, I, I sort of as we've heard tonight, I really did appreciate it's a different process. It was a much different level of conversation. The community conversation was much different, much more positive. Um, there was good collaboration, so those are all positives. And actually, um, I totally support the school budget at, as it's presented to go to the voters to make a decision. I do have some concerns, and I think you've heard some of those concerns articulated tonight, that as you think about the Wentworth monies that are applied, that adds about 2%. So it, it is pretty impactful, and we heard about sustainability. My worry is the sustainability of maintaining 3% with some of the decisions that are, that are especially being made on the municipal side of the budget. So that's sort of my micro concern. We can talk a little bit about those things. We've had some great conversations about them. There was recommendations that you see in front of you that came out of the Finance Committee. Um, and so I, I guess I'll leave it in that and we'll move on to conversations, I guess, tonight. Councilor St. Clair. Oh, we're going down the line? <laughs> 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 I were just Dealing with finance people. I can start at the other end. Uh, no, no, that's, that's okay. Um, uh, whew, okay, yeah, you caught me off guard. I apologize. Um, so I think this is probably the first year for me um, that um, I, I, I'm kind of doing a flop. Um, I, I was really impressed with the school board this year, um, really impressed with our own finance committee on how they worked together. Um, this is my fifth year, and this is by far the best um, the best conversations that I've ever seen. Um, and I think what happens when you have that, when you have those two committees work so well together, it trickles down. So it kind of goes down to everybody else that is kind of beside them at the table. Um, and I think that's a huge help. Um, it, the presentation by Sean um, is by far n surpasses anything that we've had in the past. So I'm hoping that that's helpful for people. Um, like I said, I think with, I want to go back to, I am sort of flipping. This is the first year that I am in full support of the school board's um, budget. But on the flip side, I have some concerns about the municipality budget. Um, and I think we're going to talk about those. But um, I have to agree with Councillor um, Hayes. I do have concern. I know there was some talk mentioned about it tonight, um, about the Wentworth money that was 
found. Um, you know, what's going to happen in a couple of years, I, that worries me greatly. Um, some of the people that are voting on this budget are not going to be sitting at this table in two years when we don't have that money anymore. Um, and so that worries me and we don't have a definite answer as to what's going to happen. The one thing I think we can definitely say is we're not getting any more money from Augusta. I don't see that anywhere in our future and that's extremely frustrating. Um, that being said, I still am going to support the school board. Um, I want to listen to some of my other councillors um, comments and feedback. Um, on the municipality side, um, but I do have, and I, I will go back to those as we get further into this, but I do have some concerns on some of the line items. Thank you. Councilor Caterina. Uh, yes, I, um, I'm i going to join in on the chorus that uh, this is my third budget, and this is by far the best um, process that I've been through as far as the budgeting. As far as the uh, open communication between the school board uh, and the town council, uh, people being willing to negotiate and work hard. I w attended as many meetings as I was able to attend uh, just so I could see what was going on in the process. It's one thing to read about it in the paper because with all due respect to our <coughs> journalists sitting here, uh, they aren't doing a word-for-word -word transcript uh, of what's going on at meetings. They're just doing a recap. Um, and um, if you have concerns about budget, try to come to as many meetings as you can, which I know isn't always possible, but just to see the process that, that people go through. And I thought it was uh, very, very well done. Um, I agree we cannot rely on the education funding formula um, Augusta, quite frankly, there's no stomach for changing it. Believe it or not, our state has one of the better uh, funding formulas for making sure that all schools and all students throughout the state get the funding that they deserve and the education they deserve. Um, and regretfully, Scarborough, or actually we're fortunate, but regretfully on the school side, we have the third largest highest valuation in the state. Portland, York, and Scarborough's number three in how much money, if we, we could sell the town as a whole town, how much it would be worth. So, I, I mean, you know, so it affects us. The good news is with these higher valuations, then the amount of money that we have to spend or that we've decided we're going to spend, it gets spread out more and it makes what's called your mill rate go down. Uh, and I know these are all funny terms for people. People are like, what the heck are you talking about with mill rate? The bottom line is you do, I know some people spoke that they don't understand, well, why do we talk about mill rate and why don't we talk about percentages of this or that? Well, the bottom line is how much is your tax bill? That's what people care about is how much is my tax bill every year and what is the value that I'm getting for my tax bill at the, at the end of the year. I am pleased that we set a goal of around 3%. We've come in at that. Um, once we get this valuation in August, and again, we're in an absolutely crazy system because we make these judgments and come up with these budgets, and we don't know what our valuation is until August when the final mill rates are set. But I'm confident, because I'm out there on the market every day in, in my business, um, that our evaluation is going to go up this year. So we're going to, I, 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 I'm going to go out on the limb and say we're going to come in under 3% for an increase, which I know is frustrating to people on fixed incomes. And I, 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 I get that, I hear that, but we've got to weigh, you know, the investments <coughs> that we need to make as a community and in our children and in our future and trying to make sure that we aren't taxing people out of town. And that's a tough balance for me uh, as a counselor. But again, I will support this budget. I think they did a great job. I want to give personal kudos to Councillor Babine. I've sat through a lot of different budget type things in my life and that was probably one of the easiest ones I've ever had to understand explained to me. So anyway, that's it. Thank you. Councillor Rowan. So I, I just had a question before I, I get started. This is an opportunity to, to make comments about the process or 
what, what's happening right now. Tell me about the amendment. <laughs> uh, well, you've lost track. Just, I, I, just, <laughs> just for clarification's sake, uh, once uh, everyone's had an opportunity to speak to the amendment, amendment we'll vote on the amendment. That will uh, uh, either amend or not amend the main motion. We'll then have an opportunity to speak on the main motion. So there's some people would choose to comment at this point on you know particulars that are of interest to them. They may want to reserve it for the next line of discussion. Okay. It's really discretionary. Gotcha. So there'll be another opportunity. There will be. Fantastic. So then <coughs> I wanted to thank the town manager, superintendent, and your staffs for uh, the hard work you put into putting this budget together. Uh, Sean and Jody and the finance committees, uh, I really appreciate all the time you guys have put in. I was able to get to some of the um, meetings, not as much as I, I would have, uh, have liked. Um, I feel like this is a, a really a compromised budget. We don't really get, you know, we don't really get everything that we want and we don't uh, get to choose that, to fund only those things that we care about. Um, and as a body, this is the first opportunity that we've had to discuss it. Um, certainly the first time that I've had an opportunity to discuss it with all of you, and, and I, I definitely have some questions and concerns that I'm hoping that we can kind of talk through. Um, I, I'm not 100% certain that we've, that we've nailed the process from um, uh, yet. Uh, I know that we've done a really good job. We, we offered a lot of opportunity for input, um, but um, one of the concerns that I had, and, and one of the speakers spoke to it tonight, is that you know we had a, a first reading, a public forum, all of our finance committee meetings, and then it wasn't until a week ago that, that we actually, the finance committee, made any proposed changes to the first reading, and that's just not a lot of time for you know pub the public to digest what happened. Um, I know that it certainly missed the, the leader's deadline. I'm not sure about the current and and uh, the, the forecaster, but um, but um, so I don't know, and I don't know what we do about that or or um, or what we can do. I mean, it's really we're the elected officials, and it's up to us to make decisions on behalf of the public. But in terms of like getting the information out and, and interacting, um, maybe there's something else we can do in, in the future. Um, the uh, in terms of the valuation projection, I guess um, uh, what was presented. I know that uh, we talked about the 30 million dollars as being a, uh, a conservative number, um, but then the other numbers that we talked about, those were 10-year averages. So I wouldn't say that those were like pie in the sky, like aggressive numbers. Those were those were averages that um, that if you look at if when you talk about an average, half the time probably the number's gonna come in above that and you're half not gonna the time hit me, might, are you? Might, I might. <laughs> <laughs> For instance, I'm, get, I'm getting worked up. I'm just getting started. Uh, and half the time uh, uh, you know, half the time might be a, a little bit lower, um, and then uh, and then some of those numbers are just depends on how you calculate that average. Whether you look at like a linear value or uh, talk about it in terms of compound, uh, in terms of compound growth for the valuation, which might be, um, you know, which is the way that you talk about uh, inflation, and and that would even even go into that higher number that we talked about. But again, that's just the 10-year average. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold some of the, the questions that I have because they're kind of the specifics until we get to the Good. next round. Uh, I'll, I'll make my comments uh, when we have the uh, general motion on the floor. So uh, any further comments on the motion to amend? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? One. Uh, we now have a six to one vote on the motion uh, to amend uh, what came out of first reading. And so now we have discussion on the amended motion. Councilor Bieber. So thank you. Um, actually, there's um, uh, several questions that I want to be able to answer that the public and some people have um, that I think are important to understand. And even though they're a small part of the total budget, um, I want to make sure that the record is straight on those. Um, the question was asked about uh, student enrollment. Um, it is my understanding that student enrollment projections are up and increasing. Um, in fact, um, I'm not even going to quote the number because I don't remember, but it is up and it's up significantly, particularly with the classes coming in now. Um, there was also um, uh, comments. I, I don't recall the gentleman who said that I made the statement that there was a ten, uh, that there was ten million dollars in debt service. I don't recall making that, so I apologize because I know that it's not. Um, but I do want to talk about um, really to kind of answer the embedded question within the comments around the seven point one million dollars in the refinancing of the bonds. It needs to be understood that that is um, a refinancing of existing debt plus any new debt that may have been approved as part of a previous budget regarding capital. The refinancing of existing debt, um, it needs to be understood, is that it is not 
spread out over a longer period of time, but the purpose of that refinancing is that it's spread out over the same period of time in which it was originally bonded, but yet the interest rate is lower, therefore we have a bond premium or a savings as a result of that refinancing. So that's why there's that breakdown. I'm not sure if the 3.8 was the right number, but it's the total package. It's also important to understand that bonding is very different than regular debt that you and I might carry with our mortgage. If you have excess money that you want to pay down debt, you actually cannot pay down bonds unless it is, the bond is at a point in which is what's called callable. That is the only time in which you can pay that down and then refinance whatever the remaining portion is. Why that's important is it gets to the $1.6 million that was discussed regarding the uh, bonding of Wentworth and how that was used. Um, Back in 2014, the third bond that was issued as a result of the Wentworth project was about $2.6, $2.7 million. Um, it was determined because of the time in which you have to go to market to ask for that bond, um, we did not have all of the invoices in regarding the entire project, but what we was determined after the project closed was that that was actually an overbonding situation. As a result of that, the bond issuance only allows us to apply that to our budget in two instances. The first, and, and it's up to the town council to decide which one it chooses to do. One of, that up, one of those is to use that towards capital expenditures related to the bond request and what the purpose of that was. Because that was specific to the Wentworth project, it should be used for capital expenditures related to Wentworth. In the last two years, since the finalization of the project, there has been no capital expenditures to use that money on. The only other option that we have, and it is required by IRS guidelines, is to use that for debt service which it is being used in this budget. Some people may sit there and try to say it's being used for operating expenses. It depends on how you play the eggshell game of where that's being dedicated. I can tell you that I believe it's being used for debt service. Someone else might say it's being used for something else. The fact is that it just simply goes into the budget and it gets spread out to wherever it might go. It's not specifically allocated to one particular expense in that fashion. It's blended with all the other revenues and simply paid out, over time, or paid out as part of that process. Um, so I wanted that to be clear as far as how that money is spent. Um, I also wanted to uh, mention, there was a mention that the, there is an expansion to the library in the budget. There is no expansion to the library in this year's budget. It is simply a projection that there is maybe a request coming forward in future years. Every department has provided us with capital expenditure potentials going forward, and each one of them will be discussed in those years that we believe that they're projected, but it is not part of this year. Um, I also wanted to clarify regarding the Eastern Trail. Um, the Eastern Trail is actually part of the town's budget um, and it's part of its capital expenditures. It's approximately $275,000. This is what I would consider a final investment in completing the Eastern Trail. Um, in fact, that $275,000 will be leveraged to be able to actually raise an additional approximately $1.3 million, I think, Tom. Maybe a little bit less, but, or maybe a million dollars. Uh, I, frankly, I don't recall the leveraging, but it's uh, actually 216500 16, There you go. So 216000 that's in the budget is being leveraged for additional funds that will help support the completion of the Eastern Trail, that's particularly the part of, uh, that's in Scarborough. Um, I also wanted to mention that regarding the assistant manager position that is in there at $84,500, every position that's in the budget, regardless of where, including the school's budget, is an all-in cost factor meaning all of the uh, contract requirements, whether some positions require uniforms, some positions are guaranteed training, um, equipment. Um, for this particular position, it's not really any of those. It, it includes the health benefits, and the fact is we don't know who the applicant will be, so we don't know whether or not that's going to be a single rate payer. It could be a family rate payer, so we have to budget based upon the maximum possibility, which is as a family rate. And that's about seventeen to $23,000 out of that eighty four. So the actual salary for that position is sixty-one to $67,000. So again, it's how you break down the numbers and, and how you interpret the information and the details that go behind that that's important. Um, the two pieces that I wanted to mention was really about the macro versus micro, and I do think that uh, Councillor Hayes brings up a very good point. I think we all are concerned about the sustainability of our budget no matter what year that we are in. It takes dedication and commitment um, to having this continuation of the process that we've developed and having the conversations and that we properly plan out what we want to do and how we react to the market conditions that we deal with, including the state. I don't think our work is done. Um, I, I do think that it has been a very good year, but we still have a lot of work to do in, in getting through these next uh, several years 
regarding the state, I personally, um, although, and I bet uh, Councilor Rowan um, a cup of coffee, <laughs> we kind of bet on whether, um, we kind of both think that actually next year the state of Maine actually may increase its funding for education because of the increase in enrollment. How much that is is kind of where the bet is, and uh, we're kind of having fun with prediction. We're kind of the two uh, numbers geeks, and uh, we're having a little fun with that. Um, and I also wanted to clarify the issue regarding the auditor um, and about um, the cost. And um, there was a mention that, you know, why is it uh, necessary to have the assistant manager to do the budget analyst and do the benchmarking when the auditor? Um, later on in this uh, agenda, we are talking about approving an RFP regarding our audit services. And um, it's important to note that in that cost, um, they did not provide us with a cost estimate for that request other than simply stating that it would be an additional cost. So um, the audit, uh, the, the, sorry, the assistant manager position will provide us valuable, if it's the right candidate, valuable resources in helping us maybe minimizing the cost of having an outside consultant do that. Um, the last two pieces is our, of our own um, policy. One of the things that the committee really did take a look at as far as the individual um, special items. So just in a general um, broad brush, you know, some people have a focus on the organics program and the impact of that cost. Some people might talk about um, COLA and the HR policy that the town has. Some, you know, you might look at also um, some, disc, um, you know, some uh, not being supportive of the uh, policy decision the council made regarding Higgins Beach and the monitoring. The council's committee really looked and said, we don't want to be the determinant of the policy decision if you have a problem with the policy decision, take that concern back to the council as a whole because the budget is a reaction to the policy decisions that have been made. And if you want us to talk about the organics policy that we have, and by the way, that's the <coughs> using organic pesticides or organic um, um, you know, lawn mowing and things like that, you take it back to the council, discuss the policy, and then the budget reacts to that decision, and that's what we did. Um, I'm not saying that they're not valuable discussions. They just weren't appropriate, at least in my opinion, at the finance committee level. And then last, I, I wanted to mention around the process, I'm a little nervous in speeding up the process that was recommended where we have the second reading within four weeks after the first. Um, we have been criticized in the past of trying to speed up the process too fast. Um, I think that if we did that, um, it might be a criticism today, but then the new criticism will be, well, you didn't take a, give us enough time. So yeah, I'm a little concerned. I'm always looking at how we can get better at what we do, and uh, we'll take that into consideration. Um, I think this is a good budget. I think this is a well thought out budget. That's a, it has a material investment in just about every service that we have. Um, I don't think it's incremental, it is material. Um, and I think that what will that allow us to do over the next couple of years is to look at how do we sustain what we've done and then um, how do we prepare for any economic changes. The last, the last piece I wanted to mention was the recommendation that rather than looking at mill rate, we look at the percentage increase in the dollar amount um, I disagree with that, particularly at the school board level. The reason is because the school board has, I shouldn't say the school board, at the Department of Education level, the educational department has very little revenue to offset its expenses. Therefore, in order to control that percentage increase, you're talking about a decrease in fundamental services over a long period of time. And you have to look at the total budget because we absorb those revenues through the regular municipal budget when the state of Maine doesn't provide us with that funding. So personally, I, I disagree with that approach. Um, I think the council has done a great job. Um, and while I appreciate the comments, um, this has been a team effort and everyone has contributed very positively. And I really want to thank the, uh, particularly the staff in um, getting us there and um, especially to uh, Dr. Entwistle, because um, this is his last budget, lucky him. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Uh, let's go right down the line. Uh, Councilor Rowan. Oh, all right. Um, so I guess, uh, comment and then uh, and ask, ask for some, some input. So uh, my comment was just around, I think I'm echoing somebody's comment about uh, shooting for a sustainable uh, tax uh, increase and that's when, um, you know, we came up with that number of, of 3% and that's so that even in, in hard years, you know, we're, we're still uh, making the investments now in a year where we have some positive revenue growth so that in those harder years it's easier to absorb some of the the cuts that, that may be coming without, you know, having those, those wild fluctuations that we've seen in the past. Um, but I, I guess I heard, um, you know, Sean kind of touched on this a little bit around the, um, the bond premium, but I, I feel like there's a lot of confusion there, and I'm, not, I'm wondering if we can get another explanation in terms of what happened and what, what we're doing with the funds. Uh, 
Yeah, I, uh, I take. I'm happy to take a shot at it. Uh, once the bond premium money was identified in the audit, uh, uh, we met with uh, our uh, bond counsel attorney. Uh, uh, were advised as to what the direction was that we had to proceed to legally use the money, and we were told at this point in time uh, there were no capital expenditures left under the Wentworth project and therefore we were obligated to use the money for debt service on the Wentworth bonding uh, and that's what was used. It was broken into two pieces. We used the maximum amount allowable in 2016. That's the fiscal year ending this June so that uh, a portion of it was used at that point. The balance was uh, used uh, to uh, address Wentworth debt service obligations for the fiscal year 2017 budget. Okay, so just so I, I'm clear, so then my understanding is that, so moving forward next year, there will be an additional, uh, you know, we won't have the bond premium. Um, certainly that's not something to worry about this year, but in terms of what some of the concern in the community that I've heard is around that we're going to have to pay the, the, the full cost, we won't have the 1.6 million dollar that, that's going into this budget, but in the out years, we'll be paying the, the, the full price of the Wentworth project. There will be okay. something in the order of a million dollars in fund balance that will be available. That will be a discussion for council next year to have as to when and how much of that to use, but uh, there is a million dollars created through the mechanism that the Chairman Donovan just mentioned by paying debt service in the current year, we'll be, we'll be turning a year in surplus, and that money is available and will be at your discretion. Gotcha. So there's, there, there will be a fund balance of about a million bucks. The moving forward, the we would expect that this is a pretty typical year, and that the full cost of the Wentworth project would be what we budgeted this year plus 1.6. Is that? Am I understanding that correctly? No, we budgeted the entire amount. The expenditure hasn't changed materially. We just have a new revenue source that's one time in nature, uh, if you will. And so next year, in the absence of that, it would be. The, the other revenue would have to provide the 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 1.6 billion dollars that we currently have in the current budget. Correct. Okay. Um, so everyone's still looking at me, so I'm going to ask my next question. <laughs> <laughs> now you can take a break if you want. No, no, no. I've got more. There's no limit. We will come back. But no, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Uh, so um, the um, Another question that I, I, I know that I, there have been a lot of comments that I received around the uh, senior recreation facility, and I know that the motion that we just moved was that more work has to be done, but I'm wondering if we could just get another like explanation of kind of what it is, and, and specifically I'm looking at Councillor Hayes uh, as the liaison to that committee to maybe talk about what, what that committee has, uh, is talking about. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's kind of a work in progress. And, and, and what this really came out of, they, they you know, and, and I think you've attended some of the meetings, the, the senior group is really, they've got really kind of two two groups. Their traditional programming has been a lot of, they call it the out to lunch bunch. So it's really been really geared around, you know, buses and taking a lot of the seniors to lunches and other activities. But they've recently done a survey, and that's what a lot of the younger over 55s are really saying, you know, the, the lunches are less interest to us. What we're really interested in is, is some way to do some physical activities. And so they're reacting to what they thought they were getting back from their membership base. And, and what the others are saying is, yeah, we wanted to have an ability. And, you know, someone mentioned pickleball. I had no idea what pickleball <laughs> is, but it is a huge phenomenon. I mean, there is the villages in Florida have like 125, 150 pickleball courts and they're full all the time. So, so anyway, they're trying to respond. They're trying to build the services to seniors. They thought they heard from the senior group that there's an interest in this. So they were trying to work with it and asking what they could do. So it's really, this is kind of a placeholder. Um, and actually tonight we had heard there were some rumors that the advisory committee was kind of split on it. But what, what you have in front of you is all the advisory committee members have signed a document saying they support it. But I did talk to them, and they're fully comfortable with saying, okay, this is just a placeholder. It's not fully baked. It's not fully designed. They don't really know. And there needs to be a lot more legwork about, okay, what does the community really want? What is that going to look like? Where is it going to be? And, and so that's, 
that's sort of how this has evolved to what's in front of us tonight about having a placeholder in the budget for it. But whatever, and I understand it, I think, that whatever is put forth needs to come back to the council for approval. So it, it's not the approval to spend the 100000 in this budget. It's just a placeholder for it to come back for a further conversation and, and community input, I guess. Is that, is that fair? Does that capture the intent of the amendment? Yeah, I, I believe it does. Uh, and there is an expectation that there will be costs when you look at uh, site analysis, site development, mm -hmm. uh, and those decisions uh, are still in the future to be made as a part of the senior advisory committee process, the community services, uh, senior leadership, uh, all of that, and then the, back to the full council, all of that process will result in uh, the need to spend some funds uh, and this is a start, and we will have a tight budget when we're done, and we will uh, know exactly how the project's going to be done. But at this point, we did not want to let this fiscal year pass without any funding to do, uh, to do anything. Uh, and so at this point, we are, as you've characterized it correctly, it's a bit of a placeholder. And, and I guess if I could add two things. And two, one is, is a somewhat in response, the seniors have asked for several years now for some type of senior center mm. and again it keeps getting it we have our, our long-term plan and <clears throat> we're talking about the campus here but that keeps being pushed off in time so this was sort of a way to kind of address some of that and two and I think the community needs to do a little more you know it was kind of interesting part of it was why do they need sort of a separate center and it really was some comments two real perceptions which I don't know if they're real some of the seniors said well geez we're just not comfortable being intermixed with students because it's, it's not comfortable for us and there was some feedback that students don't necessarily like to be intermixed with seniors which I'm not sure if ch is true but that's sort of some of their perception so I think we need to do a little more work to kind of test that and, and see whether we can incorporate into existing facilities or whether we really need something something different thank you um, I did have one follow-up so just so I can picture it in my mind uh, my understanding of pickleball is it's kind of like tennis and so you need I mean, it's similar paddles. It is. It's small, paved. small it's tennis. Sort of like oh, paved paved on, but there's, there's, but there's pavement, and so you need like something similar to a tennis court. So Correct. it is like it would be like a build out of a facility. It's not a matter of just painting lines on a existing. Piece. No, they they, they need a hard surface. You know, hard, you know, a like tar surface or sur yeah, sort of like a basketball surface or a tennis court surface. Okay. Um, the uh, the other th next question, um, the. At the Finance Committee on meeting on Wednesday, um, the initial first reading discussion of the uh, two police officers had the, had the budget line item at um, about 149,000. The line item was was put at 115. I'm wondering if we could speak to to kind of what what that difference is. I can answer that. Um, so the um, uh, police chief mentioned that there's a hiring process that entails that each officer can be hired at one of three different tiers. The budget request of 150 was at a tier three or the highest level, since you're not sure who the applicants are going to be. He said that he <coughs> could work, even though he preferred the 150 because you don't know, he could work within the 115, which is a tier one level. And again, that's all costing, including benefits, equipment, uniforms, um, and everything. So each one, and so. The 115 divided by the two is about 60,000 a piece. Um, so keep in mind that 17,000 alone is just benefits, potential benefit planning for a single if they're not married. So, so I guess my question is, are we are we limiting what the the candidates that Chief Moulton can hire? So I don't want to speak for the chief, um, and and I don't want to uh, put him on the spot. But we asked, um, I actually asked the chief if he had to hire at the tier three or the 150, could he find the additional $35,000 within his budget to hire them, and he said yes. Just think about uh, You could also think about it from a perspective if they had to hire at a three-quarter time and start, um, like, instead of doing a full year, and they could wait three months and hire them, you know, that 115 in the first year and then take care of it in the following year. How he, I mean, I'll be honest, how he implements that is his decision. I'm comfortable. Uh, hopefully the chief is comfortable as well because he did say he could accomplish this with the 115. Yeah, I think the we recognize that the department heads have a great deal of discretion as to how they actually uh, have to adjust their budget. Uh, and in this case, uh, it was uh, uh, a very compelling argument by Chief Moulton for a need for additional staff. 
uh, as strong a presentation as I think any of us who were in the room had seen. And so it became uh, uh, the sense that it would be funded, but because of our own desire to keep those funds at a minimum level, 115,000 was put to the chief as a, a question, could he work within that number? And he said he could. Great. Yeah, no, no argument with the, with the yeah. need. I mean, part of that valuation growth comes in with a lot of mm. new houses, new families moving into town, a lot of new retail. Yeah, I, I, I think people say, oh, the population of the town's not changing much. <laughs> well, if you, if you look at what's happened, we've had about 50 million a year in additional assessed value in this town for the last 10 years. That's a half a billion dollars. And uh, while it may not show up in more people, when you think about how much more activity is associated with a half a billion dollars uh, worth of, uh, of investment in the town, a lot of it's commercial. And I think we all realize that commercial activities will frequently be a greater demand on police uh, uh, services. Uh, and so it's very easy to understand why uh, the very, very limited hiring that we've had for many years uh, in the police department has reached a point where we needed to take action. And the same could be said for the fire department mm -hmm. uh, on the very same reasons. Can I just make yes, go ahead, Kate. Um, I also think, too, that sometimes people underestimate the size of Scarborough, oh, yeah. the square. I mean, we're, we're a very large town. Um, and I think if someone actually took a tour of, the out, of, of actually going around the Scarborough town limits, you would be surprised at how laid out we are. Um, and that puts a lot of pressure on our police department and our fire department. Um, if you're on some of those outer lying areas, I don't think you want to wait 25 minutes for a rescue or a police officer if someone's breaking into your home or you're having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. um, so those are things that I think people underestimate and forget that we are a very spread out town. Thank you, Peter. Yeah, I was just gonna, I was just gonna kind of echo your comments, but one other thing the chief did share with us, which was just a real surprise to me, you mentioned commercial and the demands commercial brings. The chief shared there are four retail entities or four businesses account for 996 calls a year mm. and his, he did the math and that's the equivalent of one full-time officer is just dealing with these four businesses and yeah. different incidents that happen on site. So that, that commercial, as you say, is putting a huge demand on services for, for our police department. Will. Uh, thank you. Uh, so it was kind of a nice segue into my next question. Um, the, um, I noticed again in, in tab nine, that we had the fire positions, uh, the two positions were at 138,000. Um, the line item on the, on the, excuse me, the adjustment in motion one is for uh, 211, and my understanding is that um, the difference is we added some per diem hours, and we also restructured some, uh, some positions to, to create some captains and some new lieutenants, is that? Uh, the per company? diem expansion was actually part of the proposed budget. It was roughly $61,000. So the 211 is comprised of the two new full-time uh, uh, firefighter EMTs and associated supervisor, supervisory um, upgrades, if you will. These were factors that were negotiated as part of the union contract, and the trigger point is these two officers. It would have been last year had all four been hired, frankly. So that's the difference, that's gotcha. the 211. Great, thank you. Um, and then the last thing um, that I have questions on currently um, is the, uh, the two administrative positions. Um, you know, I'm wondering if we, could, if we could just recap what they are, why they're important, and why they're important to do that. <coughs> Let the town manager uh, speak to those. Uh, sure, I'll start with the sustainability coordinator, and, and I guess I should preface uh, my comments about both that don't get caught up in the titles. We struggled over what uh, what to title these positions, but uh, essentially the sustainability coordinator was intended is intended to uh, wear many hats, if you will. Uh, there's a recognition that it will be perhaps a challenge to find the right individual. We're asking a lot of this person, but as the council's bared witness, uh, stormwater issues are becoming more and more prevalent. Uh, that's an area that we uh, through patchwork through staff. Um, you know, plugging here and there uh, have dealt with it, but it's going to be a bigger issue going forward. 
we have ongoing uh, commitments on the beach in terms of all those beach monitoring activities. Um, perhaps the two biggest areas that we'd like to see advanced in are, are is in energy efficiency and, and solid waste reduction. And we believe, though we couldn't quantify it, that there'll be significant cost savings as a result of those efforts, uh, perhaps enough to cover the position cost, the cost of the position. As Councilor Baby mentioned, one of the requirements in the job description will be that they document and quantify their return, if you will, the ROI on that position, and that's going to be uh, something we evaluate on an ongoing basis. Um, the assistant manager position, again, perhaps not aptly named, uh, in that I would estimate 15 or 20 percent of that position will be doing administrative things. There are tr two primary thrusts for the position, both of which came out of lengthy discussions over the last year and a half or two with the Finance Committee. One is to enhance our analysis capabilities for budget analysis and comparative purposes. I think uh, you saw Councillor Babine talk about all sorts of benchmarks and metrics. Uh, we need someone dedicated to do that on more, uh, a more routine basis. And the other aspect is procurement or purchasing. Mm -hmm. And again, I think there, there's a strong argument that there can be a return on the investment there. So we really try to package these positions to get the biggest uh, uh, you know, bang for our buck, so to speak, <coughs> and really are mindful that um, uh, package them in such a way that it returns the best investment possible. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank Satisfying. you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Caterina. Sure. Oh, I get to come back, right? If I have yes, you do. <laughs> uh, I love following these detail guys because actually I don't have much more to add. He covered almost <laughs> all my my questions. I would just, um, I mean, I I absolutely um, support the addition of all of the uh, positions noted. Um, we have put off hiring for the fire department and the police department long enough. Uh, again, you know, this is a growing town. This town isn't getting any smaller any sooner. Uh, we have, uh, how many square miles do we have? 54, 54 56 square miles, and it's true, as, as Councilor St. Clair said. You know, if you've got two officers or three officers on at a time, and for some reason they're dealing with a domestic way over on Broad Turn Road, and they have to come to my house, which is way over on Gorham Road, it's going to take a while for a response, um, and we don't want that as a town. Uh, likewise, for a fire department, people don't realize that your staffing of fire departments and positioning of fire stations and whatever affects your home insurance costs, if nothing else. Um, and by having adequate amounts of staffing for fire personnel, it, it helps you in the long run as homeowners or property owners. Uh, assistant manager and the sustainability coordinator, uh, Manager <coughs> Hall addressed those very well. I feel that those are investments, uh, that we will get a return on our dollar with the investments in those uh, uh, two positions. And I would remind people that the municipal side of this town has held the line and made sacrifices year after year after year, and I don't think they're asking for the moon here, uh, and I think that they've done a good job of, of uh, explaining why they need them <coughs> and uh, what sense they make, and I will support them. Thank you. Councillor St. Clair. Yeah, I think, the, uh, yeah, following those guys, it's no, there's not much left, but um, I think the only thing I wanted to point out along the lines of the fire department was I think people have a, sometimes have a misconception that they're not just there, they're not just there to fight fires. So they don't just sit around all day and wait for a fire to happen. I mean, these guys are busy. Um, they're doing things in our community. Uh, they're doing things at the firehouse. They're doing things in our schools. Um, so they're not, they're, there are reason, other reasons why we need them not just to fight fires. Um, and so I encourage you, I know the chief is really good, um, I encourage you if you have questions to contact him or to even take a tour of one of the firehouses. Um, it's, it's pretty incredible what they do and I think, um, you know, whenever we see these positions come up, they're so easy, it's so easy for people to dismiss them um, and they're actually uh, incredibly valuable to our town and the safety of our town. 
Um, so I, I'm glad to see that it's, we finally have reached a year where we can get these on the budget and we can get them passed through because we, they've been asking for these for quite a while. So that's it. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. Yeah, and, and Will, I, I'll kind of piggyback on, onto you. Um, in your conversation about the Wentworth funds and where we are, um, you're right. I mean, there's, there's 1.6 million that's going to be applied next year that's in these numbers. That, that actually is about 2%. So the, the real increase is really more when you think about it. We are carrying a million dollars in, but if we continue on our pathway to minimum receivership, that million that we're carrying may off, be more than offset or approximately offset by reduction in school funding again. So again, the only concern that I have is on the municipal side, we're adding six new positions for about $500,000, which is about 1% you know, increase to our budget. So I. I'm really concerned about how we get to 3% next year without new revenues. Um, and I had sort of the same, I absolutely support the police and fire. And, and they have, they have come for several years, <coughs> laid out a compelling business case why they need it. I absolutely support that. I would prefer to, to push the administrative positions out a year to we really actually see what our budget situation is and whether we can afford it rather than have it baked in now. Because the problem is, my big concern is we're adding six FTEs. When you add FTEs, I'd hate to be in a position a couple of years from now that we have to look at, you know, can we sustain that, that, that labor force? So that, that was my only concern with, with the budgets that are in front of us, is just the timing of some of these, of these positions. And, and that's just my concern about getting and staying at that 3%. Because the way I look at it, I think 3% next year, unless the cards really fall well, is going to be a challenge for us. Councilor Gaza. Yeah, so I'm also a detailed numbers guy, but having <laughs> the benefit of uh, five <laughs> months on the Finance Committee, most of my questions have been answered uh, twofold and sometimes more. Um, I will just point out to councilors, though, that um, let's be cautious about being too futuristic <laughs> with our projections. Um, no one really knows what's going to happen at Augusta. We've got a responsibility this year to, to pass a fiscally responsible budget based on what's in front of us right now. Uh, it doesn't mean that we, don't, that we ignore futures, but as I said before, hope for the best and plan for the worst. Um, I think we could just as easily speculate next year's valuation to be X amount percentage higher and we don't have to worry about additional school funding. Um, I think it's a very dangerous uh, precedent when we start applying next year's potentials to this year's budget decision. So um, I, I'd also like to remind us that we're, we're really looking at, to, to, to Councillor Baybine's comments, we're looking at the, the 50,000 foot view of reacting to what our policies and our our, our procedures are in the budget. We shouldn't be using the budget process to set uh, policies or, or, or detail type things. That's just something that we do over the course of the regular year through ordinances and things like that. So I'm, I'm very comfortable with this budget. I think, um, <coughs> uh, quite frankly, I don't know how w w really anybody could have a challenge with it. We're able to, um, you know, uh, Councilor Rebine said materially fund. I think they're reasonable investments. And we haven't excluded one particular department or one particular group at the expense of another. Um, the, the requests, luckily this year, I think we're able to meet the, the, the requests from town and school, partly because they were reasonable up front. Um, could they use more resources? Absolutely. I don't think there's a department in town that wouldn't have asked for more if they felt they could. But they, that's part of being responsible, is asking for what you need. And I think it's our obligation mm -hmm. to provide what they need and keep the tax rate where it is. And I think this budget does that. So I will support it. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me, uh, we've lived this budget now for many months. And so for us, uh, we have a tremendous sense of what's in there and why. Uh, some of you out there, this is more first impression. And so I hate to short, well, it gets long. Uh, I hate to shortcut the process to not sort of answer some of the questions that come up. Uh, the question of, you know, kind of hiding the municipal positions. We have a very thick book that identifies in detail those positions, and it was always made very clear by the town manager from the outset 
uh, uh, both in the original presentation and the uh, t uh, finance committee meetings that we were going to look at those positions, but uh, it was going to have to be a case to be made for them. And, and to a person up here, I think we felt the case was made. So uh, I wanted to answer that. <clears throat> uh, on the school side, uh, the main portion of the uh, uh, expansion beyond a level services budget is directed at the high school. The high school, for those people who have been watching the process of uh, school educational improvement plans for several years, knows that that uh, level of our system has been waiting. Uh, and uh, uh, the high school leadership, along with uh, Dr. Entwistle, have been working on ways to resolve and advance the high school program and curriculum. And, and it dealt with a major change in scheduling. Uh, the five FTEs, the five full-time equivalent teachers who are being added, <clears throat> are a, just a little piece of an overall plan to materially improve our high school. Uh, it's time. Uh, the case is made. You're either all in or you're all out. Uh, we, I think, as a group, uh, have heard the presentation. The Board of Education has heard the presentation, and we are all in uh, on that. It is time to spend that money to, to, to get this staffing. So uh, that aspect uh, uh, I found compelling. Uh, I found the uh, 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 science, technology, uh, STEM, uh, math uh, teacher at the uh, Wentworth School compelling. Uh, this is where we need to be having our children. This is the future of America's economy. Uh, if we don't have these kind of sophisticated, uh, this kind of sophisticated training uh, at third, fourth, fifth grade, then you miss the opportunity. Uh, so many of us have heard, if you don't educate your children from zero to four before they get into kindergarten, you're missing out on a large part of the opportunity of having <coughs> that child be educated. So uh, that made a great deal of sense, certainly made sense uh, to me. Um, uh, for me, this process has been very much a push and a pull because the way I saw some of our priorities was different than the way some of the other people in the uh, town council, and I've talked to everybody on the town council about it. Peter and I were talking about how we perceived fire and police versus the administrative parts again today. Uh, and, and what I came to the conclusion was that this is where we've gotten to. This is the consensus that has developed through months of work by two finance committees. And I'm prepared to subordinate my personal preference for doing X as opposed to Y and support this budget because I think we started out many months ago with a retreat and we said consensus building is a critical part of team building. Uh, getting people who, while they have the opportunity to have their say, and they may not get everything that they want, they nevertheless still can support something because they know that it was seven people here and a terrific town manager working in good faith uh, with uh, the goal of making the town the best possible town that we can make it. And that's how I've arrived at uh, a sense that I can fully support this budget. So I have to, thank you, and I have to apologize. Um, I really should have, um, I had made known to the rest of the council that I had an additional amendment that I wish to um, have presented and maybe should have done that before. Um, if you would do it at the time. If you don't mind, no, if I, I do that you would at, do at the time, it's, time. A, it's a minor amendment, but just to, uh, I'm sorry, I do apologize, uh, but I appreciate the convenience. Um, I would move to amend the motion and approve an increase in the municipal expenditures for allocations to outside agencies for Project Grace in the amount of $8,000 and to increase the police asset forfeiture revenues by $8,000. And we ask that the Project Grace administer those funds to support partial payment scholarships for treatment placement. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion, Councilor Bailey. So um, 
a couple of things. One is this is more of a, what I would classify as a value-added amendment to a very large budget with a very small amount, but I think it's absolutely significant. Um, some people have asked why the structure and how I came to this. First, it's important to, to recognize that um, the great work uh, that the police department has done in creating Operation Hope. Um, I saw today on one of their announcements that they had their 150th placement um, um, as part of this program with great success. And in fact, they've been able to measure that their success in not only the placement, but really keeping these young, um, these people out of um, their addiction um, is, I believe it was 81%, which is higher than the national and regional average, which is absolutely um, great success. And I want to recognize Chief Moulton, Officer John Gill, and Analyst Jamie Higgins for the work that they do with that. But also to recognize Project Grace, who has been the fiduciary administrator for them. And they're the ones that really help in finding the scholarships that are needed when people do not have the health insurance. And sometimes that health insurance, um, even though they have it, requires a minimal payment that can't be made. Um, the reason for the structure of this as far as the dollar amount is that at our last meeting, we approved the receipt and acceptance of approximately $8,000 in assets forfeiture that is directly related to um, items and cash and everything that's been seized as part of um, other drug-related busts or other drug-related activity. And I think that um, what better way to use the asset or the value of assets that have been uh, sold related to drug activity for the problem that drug activity creates. Um, there's been many towns that have looked to Scarborough um, based upon what Scarborough has done for leadership. Um, I think that why not also have them look to us to also support it financially. Um, I'm not looking for this to be an ongoing funding uh, request in future years, but given the recent receipt of drug-related funds into our forfeiture account, why not use it for this particular cause, and I think it is a good cause that needs greater attention across the board throughout the state of Maine. So I would appreciate if you voted for that amendment. Thank you. Further comment? Councilor Gaza. So uh, yeah, I certainly can, can uh, uh, support this amendment as in, in theory. Just one quick question on the wording. Um, if, I'm, if I'm clear with this, um, it's going to be increasing uh, project grace in the amount of 8,000, should, should it be decreased the police asset forfeiture revenue by 8,000? Is that, or is that my misinterpretation? No, there's actually a asset forfeiture revenue line in the police department. So I think the intent is, as I understand the motion, is to not use tax dollars, but to use asset forfeiture funds to support this additional expenditure. So you'd need to receive it to then spend it. Okay. So All it right. does both. Okay. Thank you. Other comments? Council Rowan. And is this using the just a question, clarifying question. Is this using the $8,000 that we received at the last meeting, or is this yeah. in, in expectation think, of receiving new funds? I think that's the intention. The intention was the previous 8000 and I know there's been some conversations around maybe future grants, but this solely relates to the um, asset forfeiture uh, revenues that we received at the last meeting. Other comments? Councillor um, St. Clair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Baybine. I know this is a this actually is a huge thing for them. Um, I did talk to um, crime analyst Higgins today, and um, I know that they're desperate for this kind of money, and um, for them to be able to continue the work that they're doing, they need people to kind of step up and help them out, and this is a huge thing for them. So thank you very much for this. Councilor Katerina. Um, I also want to thank Councilor Babine for coming up with this. Um, as people know, I have a personal, uh, I feel like an attachment sort of to Operation Hope. I've, um, I feel very strongly in what they're doing. Uh, every life is worth saving, and um, yeah, I, I will support this wholeheartedly. Thank you. Other comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous uh, motion to amend the budget to the main motion. Back to the main motion. Any further discussion uh, by members of the council? Uh, therefore, we are ready to vote, and it will be a roll call vote, please. Councilor St. Clair? Yes. Councilor Hayes? Yes. Councilor Cazzo? Yes. Councilor Baybine? Yes. Councilor Rowan? Yes. Councilor Katarina? Yes. Chairman Donovan? Yes. Thank you, council members. I think we'll take a, uh, a two-minute break right at this moment. Thank you. Thank you.
40, act on the request from Maine Municipal Association to nominate a municipal officer to serve on MMA's Legislative Policy Committee for the next two-year period. Uh, and I will accept a motion. Uh, Councillor Katerina. Uh, I move that we nominate Sean Babine for the position of the Legislative Policy Committee. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Quick vote before he changes his mind. Sure. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, 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 seeing no discussion, I will say that I asked I for a. Uh, uh, you do? Yeah. Yes. Very good. I'll, <laughs> I'll uh, reserve my comments for a moment. Um, I having held this position for the last uh, two years, um, it, it's more involved than you think it is, but I'm not trying to talk you out of it, Sean, I don't, <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, you, you end up going up to Augusta during a legislative session uh, once a month anyway, occasionally more than that, depending on uh, what's up and what's going on in front of the legislature. You also um, are in email uh, voting throughout the year on various uh, things that will come up. Uh, I, I know that uh, Councilor Babine has a lot of experience uh, with legislative uh, matters and understands the process up there, so I feel very comfortable in, in nominating him and feel that he would do a great job for us uh, if, he, if he is elected. He has to go through one more election, so to speak, because you do... We, we're like nominating him and then he gets elected and there are two people from the Senate, so-called Senate District 30 uh, that is covered that represents Scarborough, Gorham and Buxton and the town manager of Gorham, David Cole, has been the representative with me in the past. So, just so you know. A little bit Good. Of Other comments? Uh, I, I, I will say that it is a bit of a, a thankless job because you do have to do some travel. Uh, I acted as backup to Councilor Katerina last year. Uh, I wanted to do it because I enjoyed at least doing something once <laughs> <laughs> after my first bankruptcy and my first the foreclosure. Those were the only ones I did in that, that score years, years ago. But I did enjoy doing some things once, but I've done it once, and so I asked if anyone else would act as a backup, and Councillor Hayes has offered to oh, cool. stand in, because there are definitely moments when you, in the winter, when you simply cannot make it. And so uh, that's a, a, nice, uh, 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 a nice backup plan. So uh, further comment? Uh, seeing none, all in favor? Both. <laughs> Eh, <laughs> we'll not. Uh, Couldn't you, even comment. Just only let him deny. Didn't even get the hand up. <laughs> uh, uh, order number 16-41, act on the request to appoint MacPage as the town auditors for three years pursuant to section uh, 215.1 of the town charter. Uh, and I'll accept the motion. Move approval. Second. Okay. Uh, any amendments to the motion? Uh, Councillor Hayes. Yeah, I, I have an amendment, um, and it reads, Order Number 16041, move approval on the request to appoint Mick Page as a town auditors for three years pursuant to Section 215.1 of the town charter subject to the town manager negotiating the final pricing and failing to come to any satisfactory terms. The appointment will go to RKO subject to the same conditions. Good. Second. Second. Discussion on the motion to amend. Chris, um, I, I'm I'm a little I'm, I'm trying to figure out how we how we address that because I think when we asked for RFQs, are we are we still negotiating the 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 contract that comes through, or is it just an opportunity to try and get a better price? Me meaning that I thought when we put the, when we put the bid package yeah. out, we get a, we get a fixed price back and we evaluate the bids based on what we get back. Right. Uh, then are we going to reopen it up again for negotiations for all three or, or all, all of the recipients, or how does this work? Well, and I, I think, I mean, I, I kind of proposed this, so I guess. Um, it's sort of thought was, and, I, and I've done a couple of these in, in the business environment. So, yeah, well, you go out for an RFP, mm -hmm. and you get responses back, and they're kind of like the list prices. In this case, it, it appeared that we have, you know, maybe two contenders that there's price point differences. 
So there is maybe an opportunity to go back to, you know, whoever's selected to say, gee, is there a way you can sharpen the pencil or look? And that's that's really what this is about, to see if there's a way to get them to sharpen the pencil a little bit. Um, and then, so that that was the purpose of that. Sure, and I, th I agree with that 100%. My concern would be that, uh, is there is that, uh, is that are we allowed to do that, and do we have to give that opportunity to all of the bidders again to try and meet that final price? No, or no. In fact, in the RFP, uh, in the evaluation and selection process section, it says, among other things, and I quote, Negoti negotiation shall be conducted with the auditor rank first. If a contract cannot be negotiated with the first rank auditor, then negotiations may be conducted with the second rank and there, so on and so forth. So I think what this amendment intends to do is exactly what was envisioned here. All bidders were aware of that. <coughs> and unlike a more formal sealed bid where I think uh, you need to be a bit more rigid, RFPs are meant to be flexible. Um, but I, I still, I understand your point. I, I, I do think it's important to be as clear and up front and to treat all of them uh, you know, as, as uh, equally as we can. And I think uh, this resulted from some discussions that Councilor Hayes and I had today, uh, and I think it's uh, just looking out for the best interests of the town, uh, seeking to uh, at least explore uh, with uh, the company that finished first in the selection process, and there was a committee uh, that reviewed all of these, made up of uh, the people with uh, budget expertise, uh, and accounting expertise uh, in uh, in uh, town hall. So uh, uh, we are looking to the what is considered the best candidate, and now we'd like to wrap up the negotiations on terms most favorable to the town. Sure, and I don't I don't disagree with that 100%. I think it's a great support. I just want to make sure we're not exposing ourselves to a potential conflict or a you know a, a, a so that you know a, a request for you know we're, we're negotiating in good faith. I guess yeah, is the best appropriate way to, put it. to inquire. Yeah. I'm yeah. Mm -hmm. glad for the clarification. Councillor Caterina, and we'll go right down the list. Um, two, two concern, one concern, well, two concerns. One concern is this amendment redundant if it's already built into the RFP, mm -hmm. this process. And secondly, uh, frankly, if we can't work it out with behind door number one, <laughs> yes. then I'd rather bring it back to everyone. That's just me, but apparently it's already in the RFP but that I you think that's it's what I could say. Uh, we have two clear favorites. It would be right. Backpage and, and um, RKO. Uh, right. Beyond that, the appointment is the appointment of council. It's not uh, all other bid awards are my right. authority, but this is a council decision. So the way this is worded, it grants me the authority to use one or the other subject to those conditions. Otherwise, I'd have to come back to you at a later date. And time is somewhat of the essence in that we should have our auditor here doing pickup field work right now uh, as the end of the year approaches. So uh, really in the interest of time, we wanted to get this authority so we could have negotiations, make the award sooner than later. So uh, through the chair, um, it, so by doing this ad amendment, we're not being redundant? Is it, in other words, is it necessary to amend this? More in the nature of clarifying <clears throat> that we do intend. What it does, it identifies the second, and it gives me kind of clear authority to use to go to either or, subject to negotiations. So you prefer this? I think it gives me more flexibility, and, okay. and we could make this happen before you meet next. And that's mm -hmm. really the goal. Further questions? Oh, sir. So um, a couple of things. One is a question regarding, and then a couple of comments. Um, RKO's bid, um, or I should say in all of them, did we ask for uh, price estimates uh, going out five years, three years? How far did we ask them to price out for us? I believe it was for five. RKO only gave us three years of pricing. Right. Three was an option for two. So three of them gave us that what we asked for. RKO <coughs> gave us only three. So um, on the presentation, I thought that the very first line on the pricing, it said it was for fiscal year uh, June 2016. Is it fiscal year? Is it, it's for this current year that ends June, right? Um, okay, I thought this was for not the current year. I thought it was actually going starting for 2017. No. Okay. 
So um, this, the other questions that changes a, a different perspective. Sorry. Um, first, I want to mention is that the primary difference for me in wanting um, our, I'm sorry, wanting Mac Page is that Mac Page is the only auditor to provide us with a at least some acknowledgement regarding benchmarking and helping us assist in that regardless of uh, our um, approval of the assistant manager slash budget analyst slash purchasing agent, um, there is still a level of experience and expertise that you always want an outside uh, party to help in uh, developing those dashboards and metrics. And uh, why not the auditor? Because um, there's that financial factor that I had included in my presentation that's very important. And that would, so um, I hope that things do work out on that Mac page. Um, I also want to mention, I mean, I'm in, I'll approve the, uh, as a courtesy to Peter, I'll definitely approve this if it makes him comfortable because I think that all the finance committee members need to be comfortable with the um, items that are coming forward and wouldn't want anyone to be at a disadvantage or, or not be comfortable with that. So as a courtesy, um, I definitely support that. But I also hope that we take into consideration that we need to have a level of confidence in our manager in making certain administrative decisions and, or at least making recommendations. I mean, this is a $45,000 contract in, a, in a 87, or sorry, $82 million budget, um, and it's about their experience and being able to manage through the audit. Um, while I think sometimes I might make a better manager, and it's very rare, Tom, with you, um, <laughs> the fact is, is that we all have differences of opinions at times, but we do need to rely on your experience and recommendation, as well as Ruth and, and Kate and everyone else. So. Um, you know, I just don't want to get into the micromanaging part of certain decisions. And I think that it's probably brought about because this is in the town charter. Right. Uh, uh, otherwise, I think routinely it would just fall to the town manager to make the call. Any, any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, is there a comment on this one? Yes, certainly is. Yeah, I know. Larry Hartwell, Nine Purity and Drive. Um, since we can't ask questions, I'll have to put it in a different form. Um, I was su I'm surprised that, in, in my opinion, the, um, the hiring decisions of the town council, the most important ones are the town manager, the legal council, and the auditor. And so my observation, and it may be incorrect based on what I have in front of me, it appears that uh, the, the, uh, the staff did the analysis here, the, the, ta uh, the town manager is putting it before the full council, but there's no body, no um, committee of the, of the council actually reviewing this whole process. And it just seems that the nature and the significance of this position is one that would, would uh, warrant council opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, town manager. Yeah, in, in actual fact, uh, the finance committee was heavily involved and approved the RFP form itself. Uh, and then <coughs> as part of that form, it includes the evaluation criteria. Staff then did assemble an evaluation team that followed that approved criteria, and we're here tonight with a recommendation based on all of that. Uh, I mean, Finance Committee could have interviewed them, I suppose, if they wish, but I, I think certainly input has been received. Good. Any further comments on the motion to amend? Uh, I would just say that I, I looked at... Uh, probably 30 different towns audits over a number of years in, in uh, November and December and Backpage and RKO were definitely the mm -hmm. sure. most readable and school that, that I'm, so I'm, I'm Good input. I think the town had, or the staff made an excellent selection. Other comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to amend? Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, main motion. Uh, any further comments? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Non-action items. There are none. Standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Let's start down with you, Councilor uh, Kayazo. Energy uh, committee was supposed to meet this morning, but it was canceled, so or I should say postponed until the, the following cycle, so nothing new to report there. Um, school committee will be meeting tomorrow. Uh, school, school will be meeting tomorrow, I believe, to finalize what we voted on tonight. Um, I can't imagine. It's procedural at that point. There's no amendments that can be done, so I assume <coughs> that's going to be the final piece. And uh, um, that's... Uh, oh, uh, they, the um, 
Superintendent Kuchenberger's uh, negotiations were successful, um, and oh, she will be there. joining, um, I believe, in June. Um, I believe it's June. Uh, so uh, that's a positive thing. She's, uh, they've come to a mutually agreeable negotiation conclusion, and she'll be starting. Thank you. Councilor Hayes. <coughs> yeah, just quick updates. One, the senior advisory group met, but I gave that update sort of in the budget process, so that's done. The other one that just kind of a heads up, <coughs> and it probably will percolate up and come our way at some point, but you heard a little bit. David Green was here tonight talking about the issue of yeah. kayaks and surfboards down at Pine Point. <coughs> He raised the issue. There's another issue, which really is around safety. I guess last year we heard that there were, you know, some that were caught in the pilings, and the harbor master had to go rescue. And I think there was some damage done to the. But they're concerned about is that a safe place for beginners? And David shared that you know the currents right where they put in can be 17 to you know seven to 17 knots. Mm. So I think they are going to have a public hearing. The, the, the harbor community is going to have a public hearing on 6-7 to try to get what all the commercial people feel about that, where there's some other accommodation that can be made. But that's becoming a little bit of an issue down at Pine Point. And so to be continued, but you may hear more. Good, thank you. I guess those will be updates for now. Councilor Caterina. Uh, very quickly, long-range planning is meeting at 8 a.m. on Friday, and we're going to be talking about um, multi units and you know, board, potential ordinances and whatever on that. And again, uh, just to remind people that when we're talking about long range planning, we're talking long range. There's nothing that's going to change like tomorrow. Uh, Conservation Commission, we had a great presentation tonight on sea level rise and potential mm -hmm. impacts. and how we can deal with that at the town, and I want to thank my fellow uh, commission members for putting that together, and particularly Pete Slavinsky did a great job. Uh, the vision committee, we're having our all boards and committees so. and whoever come, all of you guys to come Monday, the 23rd, which is next Monday, mm -hmm. from 6.30 to 8 at Wentworth, uh, just to meet, talk, talk about, you know, vision and how we're going to move forward together. Um, and the chamber uh, music series will be starting in June in the park. So that's it. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. Uh, I'd like to echo uh, Mr. Frederick's uh, comments. Uh, thank you all for coming to the uh, Arch Dedication. That was, I think, a terrific turnout and a wonderful show of uh, support for um, uh, some really hard work that was done to, to make that possible. Um, Sedco meets in 10 hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm more, more to come on that. Uh, there, there was a uh, Scarborough Housing Alliance also meets um, tomorrow night. Um, 16 hours. In six. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hold on, no wait. 21 hours. <laughs> uh, but there have been some developments there that are kind of concerning. Um, the uh, Maine State Housing Authority is making some changes to its. Uh, scoring criteria under its uh, qualified allocation plan. This was, if you recall, um, the um, system under which uh, we had we were trying to get funding for the Southgate project. Um, at that time, we lost some points because of sidewalk uh, concerns, um, and we didn't keep, have it go forward last year. Um, the changes that are being made may disadvantage us again, um, so I may be coming to this body to ask for some comments um, so that we can to the extent that we can affect the process, that we can affect the process. But they're basically de defining that as a service center, Scarborough now has less uh, need. need than some others, um, specifically because we had some uh, income eligible uh, members that were income eligible families that were living in town had moved out of town. And so therefore they've determined that our need is less because people that couldn't afford to live here have moved out of town. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, more to yeah. come on that, mm -hmm. and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, finance, um, I'm going to leave it, uh, all the work that we've done tonight, and uh, I'll touch base with each of the finance committee members as well as the joint committee about our next steps. Um, library trustees, I don't have anything. EcoMaine, I did want to mention that EcoMaine has their annual meeting on June 16th. Um, Anna Eleanor Roosevelt, who is President and Chief Executive Officer of Goodwill Industries of Northern New England, is their guest speaker. Um, we are all invited. That starts at 11.30 a.m. at the EcoMaine um, facility in Portland. 
um, the annual meetings are a great opportunity and I think this will be um, I think by I hope by name alone everyone recognizes who she is and the uh, connection to ph philanthropy and citizenship um, and I think that's going to be a pretty incredible presentation. Um, Jean Marie, if we can schedule time for the MMA, kind of a sit down just so I can put it in my yeah, calendar and what we need to do. Out, so. And if I can, I think there's also, I have to do like a, a nominating paper or is there some type of application? Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay. Um, and then Fedco, um, I do want to mention just so I had a conversation today with Karen Martin. Um, because of the appointment to MMA and because of a um, change in my personal life uh, for employment, um, I'm going to be realigning my portfolio and uh, we'll be stepping down as the liaison, the second liaison to SEDCO. I will make tomorrow's meeting, uh, but then uh, Councilor Rowan will be our delegate um, in good hands with him uh, going forward. It's a little bit, uh, I've got six committees I'm on, so i got to think about work. <laughs> <coughs> Councilor Babe, I reviewed that with me. I thought that was quite satisfactory. Uh, town Manager report. Yes, a couple quick items. Um, Eastern Trail Alliance will be holding their annual meeting next Wednesday, May 25th at the Clambake. Uh, the Close the Gap, the Scarborough Project is uh, going to be the feature, feature, I guess. So uh, I think there's 75 folks or so that have already pre-registered and perhaps there'll be more as well. Certainly you're all welcome. Uh, I want to mention that we do have uh, significant plover nesting happening on Pine Point Beach, happening generally in the same area as we saw last year, close to the Old Orchard Line. It does present have some challenges, but we, we need to make sure we have adequate monitors to make sure we're, we're there and helping assist uh, beachgoers and, um, and make them aware generally that um, um, the plumbers are there. So I know Ryan Wynn is uh, in the process of doing that as we speak and coordinating with IFNW. So uh, things seem to be trending the same way as last year. We'll see if it holds on all season. Uh, tomorrow we are hosting a tour of our TriGen facility. Uh, GP COG has a, kind of an energy sustainability effort they've been focused on, and they put an invite out to their members. We have about 20 folks that have signed up, mostly municipal types, but some engineers. Um, so they'll be at 1.30 here tomorrow. If anyone's interested in tagging along, you're welcome for sure. Uh, and I want to mention for Tody, we do have our ballots in. There was a delay. We were not alone in being late. Yeah. I think most of the rest of the state of Maine uh, was dealing with the same printer delays. So we do have uh, our state ballots in, that's for state and county offices, and of course our local ballot for the two questions uh, budget related. Uh, and perhaps not for tonight, but I would love to provide the council with an update regarding the co-op and the Pine Point situation with recreational boaters and, co and commercial um, fishermen. Some interesting challenges and we really do, in my opinion, need to find a way um, for all, frankly. Um, and I'm confident we can get there, but um, I'm pleased to chat with any of you directly if you want to know more, and perhaps I'll talk with Chairman Donovan and we'll do a workshop uh, yeah. in the future. Carve out some time. Uh, it's worth getting uh, us all to a certain education level. Uh, let's start at this end. Councilor comments. Chris. So now that we're still packed, I can respond to the podium <laughs> questions. Um, it's a couple comments. Uh, new positions were not snuck in. I think Councillor Baybine mentioned that. They've been there all along. Um, I don't know how many different ways they can be presented, but they were, that was not a, a last minute uh, decision. Um, I've heard a lot about the impact on next year's budget, next year's budget. Um, but again, we need to focus on this year. We don't really know what's going to happen next year. Uh, no one's got a crystal ball. Um, a lot of people seem to have questions and concerns. Um, I don't know about my fellow counselors, but my phone didn't ring and the emails were pretty blank. So all my information's up online. Um, questions, concerns, comments, love to hear them. You can meet for coffee, whatever works. Um, I, don't think it's, I don't think anybody should wait until the last minute to come to the podium and feel like their questions have not been answered. I think we're all available for questions and comments and, and, and feedback. So. Uh, I don't know how else to get that information out there, but uh, certainly I'm still available. Um, last thing, uh, there was a question about debt service and, and you know, funding a lot of, you know, how it's taking a lot of money out of operational. Let's remember the, the bonded, things that we bonded, we're getting use out of. <laughs> the town benefits from that. 
So it's not a waste of money. It's not like we took the credit card and went shopping for clothes. We've got uh, facilities and infrastructure that the town benefits from and is getting usage out of. So I don't think it's it's um, fair to just immediately say we shouldn't be borrowing and bonding and we should only be looking at operational expenses. I think we have a responsibility to, to fund things long term. I think we do it very well. Um, that's not just my opinion. That's the bond rating agencies as well. So um, I hope that that's um, a bigger picture or at least a more of a altruistic picture of the, of the debt service issue. And last but not least, um, as Tom mentioned, Epstein voting starts tomorrow. Um, I think we've done our job. Now it's in the hands of the citizens, and uh, let's all work <coughs> together to try and um, get out the vote and make sure we have a positive turnout in June. And uh, hopefully to Councillor Rowan's comment about the timing issue, why we usually back into the uh, everything based on our, our budget. We've in the past taken into account several failures, I think prudently so, based on past experience. And hopefully if the process proves positive and we get a few under our belt where they are, um, uh, passed on the first round, maybe we can open that gap up a little bit more. Uh, I certainly think that's something we could explore and look at depending on what the needs are. But, but I think they are, that's really based on when we have to have a budget passed by and then we back out from there. So uh, that's it. Hey, thank you. Don't say this. I think in the spirit of 945 <laughs> tonight, I'm, I'm good. Thank you. I'm good. How's the get in? I'm, I'm with Councilor Hayes. Yeah, I, I say that. everything I need to say. Yeah. Thank you. Councilor Rowan. I just have three words we need to Four words. <laughs> <laughs> the school budget. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, anyway. so I do want to thank the uh, community chamber for the invitation to attend their annual meeting for community leaders. Um, it was a, a very nice evening to see everyone and to meet so many people. Um, it was a great presentation about the work that they've done and do appreciate everything that they do. Um, also want to thank the historic preservation um, and their dedication. If you don't get a chance or if you get a chance to go down to the Memorial Park and uh, see a little bit of Scarborough's history. And uh, it's, if you're on Route 1, take a look over behind uh, the, like the Tim Hortons because you'll still at least see, until they tear it down, the old uh, fountain that was at the Amish, uh, Amish Village as well. Um, so it's pretty interesting. I um, want to also mention, um, don't forget to vote. Um, and also keep in mind, um, and not to be um, negative but really positive, and that is that if the one criticism I have for last year is that I, I actually believe that the process that we undertook last year is very similar to this year. Our attitudes may be different, and that's the only change rather than the process. What broke down last year that made it problematic is the referendum outcome and the communications and how we contributed to that process. So um, I think that um, as long as we continue on the path that we are going, we're going to have a very successful outcome and hope everyone votes for the school budget as well as vote against excuse me, vote in favor of dis discontinuing the school budget referendum process um, and hold your town council and school boards accountable for their decisions. I did want to mention, I, we have a meeting before the superintendent leaves, correct? One more meeting, so if we want to give yeah. praise, then we can wait until then. I think that's June 1st, so I want to make sure that we keep that in our um, foresight. Around the budget, I do want to mention, I, I just want to say thank you. Um, this is my second year in facilitating it. You know, we set goals, um, and I've been critical of how we set them in the past. We stuck to meeting those goals, if not trying to exceed them. And really the next step is to learn from that process and where do we move forward, and that's really what our continuation of our work needs to do. And it not only, it's not really about improving the process, it's improving the outcomes that come from that process. Um, I do want to make one comment, and that is that there has been suggestion um, and I'm not going to I'm not going to mention names or the sources, but there's been criticism about how the town council, and particularly the finance committee, com comes to its conclusions and its recommendations and its um, um, all of its analysis around the budget. And there was um, one uh, one particular criticism said um, we've been presented with someone else's projections, and because we did not respond, they must be accurate and that we accept it. I want people to understand is that while I may have received those. Because I did not respond does not mean I agree with them. In fact, the reason why I did not respond is because they're not worth responding to. Um, because the fact is, is that what Councilor Chiesso said is that anyone can make a projection that doesn't make you any more right than I am. And nothing, no, nobody knows what it's going to be in the future. So I don't want people to think that by, I just don't have the time to respond to that type of conjecture and don't think it's worthwhile in the conversation. But I do hope everyone gets out and votes in favor of the school budget. Thank you.
Uh, uh, short comments, really, it's late. Uh, I took a trip to Pine Point today. Uh, the town managers kept me informed of, of developments uh, with IFW uh, at Point, Pine Point. It is a remarkable situation as far as really unprecedented plover activity along the Old Orchard Beach and Pine Point line. Uh, and uh, within probably a quarter mile each side of the Old Orchard Beach line, there had to be three or four uh, stake and twine set up, really only covering about 50 feet, but where uh, uh, plovers were nesting. So it was, it, it was staggering. Uh, uh, I've talked with the uh, uh, beach coordinator about uh, ways in which we can strengthen our efforts to make sure that uh, this unusual situation uh, is adequately addressed, uh, and he has assured me that he's going to work on strengthening the signage, strengthen the uh, monitoring uh, effort. Uh, anyone out there who would like to monitor, I've done it for a number of years now. I really enjoy it. Uh, I did it at Pine Point uh, last year. I've done it at Higgins Beach for years, and it, and it is a fun activity because it's a nature, and it's down on the beach, and uh, and it's uh, it's a, a very fulfilling. So I would recommend it if uh, uh, if anyone would be interested in spending an hour, hour and a half each week on the beach. So with that, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Favor. We are adjourned. <laughs>